and welcome to the Jordan B. Peterson community. We're a fan-led community where we discuss uh, anything related to Peterson. This one will be discussing Peterson's uh, Patreon alternative proposal that he just announced with Dave Rubin that he's been working on for six months. I'm joined here today by Tyler and John, and my name is Benjamin. You can find details about our community at jordanbpeterson.community. We run a weekly study group, which is, this is our public discussion. We also have a confidential discussion. And in the last week of every second month, we discuss one of Peterson's recommended texts. The next text will be The Painted Bird. Now, previous one was Ordinary Men. Uh, we will also be discussing texts now from fan recommendations. So the next one will be How to Read a Book. Uh, and that'll be discussed in January. Now, the... Um, you really got to bootstrap that one, huh? What do you mean? <laughs> uh, how to read a book. Well, we, we already get like two, a book. Two, the, yeah, but anyway, yeah. Uh, we, we the, the intro is the most important bit. So anyway, uh, let's let's kick this off right away. This is, uh, is going to be a new meme. I'm going to interrupt you every time now. God damn it, Tyler. All righty. Uh, so let's, uh, let's kick it off with what Peterson and Ruben talked about. I'll we'll display the video. Then we'll enter in a discussion about what you know, what are all the considerations? Peterson has tweeted as well as talked in this video that this is a very technically complex project. There's many considerations. So what are these considerations? I myself work in the tech world, especially in the open source world, uh, which has kind of studied these problems for a long time. So I want to, uh, I've done up a presentation of all the considerations, all the history of such things. So we'll go over that. Uh, so anyone, this thing will be valuable for like Peterson fans who are just, or the intellectual dark web fans that are wanting to find out about, you know, alternatives to Patreon, as well as for technical people uh, who want to contribute to these alternatives, because uh, there's a lot that can be done. All righty, I'll, uh, I'll kick it off the video. Uh, right now. Well, Dave and I are here today to talk about Patreon. And so I'll start. We've been engaged in a lengthy series of email exchanges with all of the people in our network. And no one is happy at all with what's been happening. And so we've been determining what our options are. And we looked at Subscribestar, but it looks like PayPal decided to cut funding out from them. And so it doesn't look like moving to an alternative provider, an, an alternative commercial pro provider that's out of our bailiwick, out of our control is gonna be viable. So Dave, why don't you describe what we talked about today? Yeah, well, first I think we should just make it very clear for everybody how significant what happened to Carl Benjamin Sargon of Akkad is. It doesn't matter what you think of him or whether you agree with him or, or any of that stuff. The banning of him for doing something that was not on the Patreon platform, that wasn't even done on his channel, because of a word he said where he was using the word against the, uh, the alt-right or the neo-Nazis or whatever you want to call them, is a massive move of that line of what's acceptable. Now, there's all sorts of debates we can have, and we've had them, of what lines should be, if there should be lines at all. But the fact that this guy got booted with no chance of recourse, with no warning, just, just like that, it, it's just an extension of everything else that we've all been talking also, about. Also, given that it, it's also the case that he didn't break patrons' rules of engagement, the ones that they stated, and that Conte had talked to you about the fact that that wasn't going to happen and that Patreon hasn't responded well to this. Well, look, look, he, Jack Conti came into my studio in my home and said, he, he said a phrase that I had never heard before, maybe you had heard it before, manifest observable behavior. So you had never even heard that phrase before, right? I thought, I thought maybe this was just something that went past me. Okay, now of course, manifest observable behavior, M-O-B, mob. You can't yeah. make that up. I mean, yeah. that's a, that, there's okay. a real... <laughs> There's what a real the beauty there. But, but so the point was that it had to be about behavior. And then in their terms of service, it also had to be about what was happening on platform. So at, at every firewall here of what would have been acceptable, Patreon failed. And they've put us in a position where, look, I, told, I called you last Saturday and when this was really catching fire. And I said, you know, Patreon is about 65 to 70% of my rev. That's, I have a company now with, with employees, you know, full-timers, part-timers. 
I was actually considering deleting it right then and there, yeah, which yeah. no one in their right mind would do. No business person would do. And I've, I've taken big risks in the past. You know, before I was on Patreon, we were at Aura TV. I, I, me and my producer and my director, we all quit our jobs, lost our health insurance, all of it, to join Patreon. So I'm not, I like taking risks, but then I realized, all right, we, we have to figure out a plan. And that's exactly why we're doing this right yeah. now. Yeah. Well, and we would have moved faster, but we, it, well, and I did set up a Subscribestar account, although I never quite finished setting it up, partly because Subscribestar seemed to fall apart almost immediately uh, yeah. under attack. And, and also, it wasn't obvious that, I also read the terms of agreement, and it wasn't obvious that we weren't going to be just in exactly the same situation again. And there's only so many mistakes you can make before the mistakes start to become fatal. So we yeah. actually wanted to come up with a serious and, 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 and stable solution. And I've been working on for months, literally for months, it's been six months, I've been working on a system to allow authors and other people who engage publicly on intellectual issues to interact more effectively with their readers and viewers and listeners. And it occurred to me this week that with a bit of modification that that could serve exactly the function that we're hoping it would serve. So what we're going to try to do as fast as we possibly can is to set the system up on a subscriber model that's analogous to Patreon. It'll have a bunch of additional features, which I don't want to talk about right now, and I don't want to overpromise. but the system is, is because the system is new. But we're going to try to get that rolled out as fast as we possibly can. So, and we have a number of people who are interested in, hypothetically interested in moving their, their subscription service over to it. Dave and I are very seriously planning to do this as soon as we can do it in an intelligent way. And so, yeah. But, and, yeah. and you know, you know, by the way, one of the interesting things here, we haven't talked about this, but I'm guessing your experience is just like mine. The amount of emails that I have received and, and of course tweets and everything else, but mostly emails from developers, from investors, from regular people, from engineers. I mean, just anyone going, this is the one because you know, the issue yeah. with, with all of these free speech things is it's like, you don't want to swing too early before you realize that the problem's gotten to critical mass. But then most likely you're gonna to swing too late. The, the lines yeah. will have moved so far that we may be on the outside of them. And that's why this one I think was so interesting because Carl, you know, years ago, five or six years ago when I started waking up to what was going on with the left obviously and, and all of the free speech stuff, everyone said you've gotta to talk to Sargon of Akkad. He's yeah. the guy. That's been, so this is the guy that's been ahead of all of this. Sargon too was like, he was big, he was very helpful to me when I was first under attack, you know, and he's a brave guy. And, and so, and it's a real mistake what Patreon has done to him. And, and, and as I said, everybody in our network is extremely upset about it. Like we've been sending emails back and forth, well, probably with 30 or 40 people. And so, yeah. as Dave said earlier, we wanted to make this video today to let everybody that we're communicating with know that, we have not been sleeping on this yeah. front, man. People are trying to figure out what to do, so this stops happening. And and so and we have a good plan, and, and we're going to try to implement it as, as soon as possible. So if I would ask everybody who's listening to be, you know, reasonably patient. Imagine that this will take somewhere between a week and a month to sort out properly. We're we're going to try to get something up in the next week, hopefully before Christmas, if we can't manage that. You no. Know, because when you implement something like this, there are technical complications that might emerge that you don't foresee. But I don't want people to get the impression that we're taking this lightly or lying down and that we're not looking for a, a, a permanent alternative because we are. And I think we can come up with a better alternative. And yeah. so that's the plan. Yeah, that, that's exactly what I would say. I would just add that it was like we were, we were waiting for a moment. You know, we've watched these doors slowly closing on us, yeah. all of us, whether it's Twitter, whether it's Facebook, who's getting banned, who's getting shadow banned, payment processing, everything else. And we are taking this as seriously yeah. as possible. Of course, you know, Jordan, who's working harder than anyone on the face of the planet, somehow you managed to also partly build a platform over the course of the past year in, in the middle of all of well, that. We knew that this, we knew that this was lurking in the background and that this was going to be a problem. And Dave, you've spent lots of time talking to investors and developers about building alternatives to these platforms that seem to be willing to throw their weight around in an increasingly arbitrary manner, but it's not like it's a simple thing to do. People want somebody to say enough is enough. And I, I mentioned this, 
uh, in a live stream I did the other day. But you know, I've watched my Patreon drop. We've lost yeah. around 600 patrons. I think about 5,000 bucks a month. But in a weird way, I've actually been inspired by it because yeah. I'm watching people yeah, stand up for themselves. So it's like on one hand, people are emailing me and they're saying I'm dropping my patronage and I'm really pissed and it's not about you and I want to support you. And on the other hand, my business side is going, oh, that's not great. But yeah. but we will we will solve this thing. I, yeah, I have I feel nothing the same to way. Do. I've lost a thousand subscribers and I feel exactly the same way. It's like, well, they're telling Patreon to go to hell and you know, it's, it's not so good for, for me on the financial front, although that's not too big a catastrophe at the moment. They're, they're taking the right stand and, and encouraging us, let's say, or encouraging someone to do something about this. So anyways, yeah. that's... Well, that's I, like, I like what you said. If we can just ask you guys to be reasonably patient, we're talking to everybody that you can think of and some people that you can't think of. We're, we're going to fix this. We're going to yeah. fix it. Yeah, well, we're going to, or at least we're going to do our best to fix it. There's going to be some bumps along the way, man because we're, now we have to speed this process up too. So you'll have to consider this a beta version. But at minimum, we hope to provide a, an easy way of switching to a new subscription service within the, the next very short while. Yeah. And, so, and thank you, everyone, for your continued yeah. patience and your continued support and your attention and your thoughts and your reaction to all of this. And, and it's, it's very much appreciated, and it does help us I would say maintain motivation to continue doing this constantly. You know, the fact that I have all these Patreon subscribers certainly is one of the reasons that I try to put my YouTube channel, I wouldn't say first and foremost, because it's had to take a backseat to this lecture tour, but man, it's way the hell up there on my priority list. Absolutely, and it gives us all sorts of flexibility to do all sorts of things. It gave me a little bit of flexibility to join you on this tour, so I'm, yeah. I'm incredibly humbled and, and appreciative of everybody that yeah. does that. Yeah. Jordan, I will I will see you in a couple of days in West Palm Beach. Listen, yeah. are you still eating steak? I will take you out for a steak. Good, good, good. Well, I found a good steak place here, so we'll, we'll I'm looking forward to seeing you, Dave. Excellent. And then I'll see you continuing the tour, eh? Because we're going to continue the tour in in uh, California. Yep. Three, three venues in California in January and then the to an Australia, New Zealand, and we're going to add additional dates and hopefully Seoul and yeah. um, Singapore, maybe the Philippines. We've got all sorts of additional things planned. We doing anything on the moon? <laughs> well, uh, not so far, but, uh, but I have some connections to Elon Musk. So <laughs> <laughs> Small okay, steps, man. Okay. okay man, we'll, we'll talk to you soon. We'll get this up right away, eh? Great. Okay, bye-bye. Alrighty, I think, okay, there we go. <laughs> this is my, uh, what do you my think is the influence there. of content? Alrighty, oh my gosh, the YouTube thing's going. Alrighty, uh, so that's the uh, discussion there. So let me switch, net, well, what's going on. And let me switch now to uh, the spreadsheet that I've done up. All right, so, uh, so pretty much, okay, so what's, what's the overview of what's happening? So we've got the urgency. Uh, so Patreon banned Carl Benjamin, which is Sargon of a card. Uh, they've also mm -hmm. kicked off other people uh, in the past. Um, well, also, just read from this, them. yeah, from this uh, banning, it was Carl Benjamin, um, uh, James Alsop, who was kind of like a Trump supporter, guy on the right uh, and then also, was he uh, no, I, I don't know I, I i only saw his, his stuff when he was first like uh, yeah when, you know, he, Trump. He, went, he went white nationalist real quick gotcha yeah that makes sense that seems uh, i can see a lot of that with the more like soft right-wing guys kind of a lot of a lot, lot for their right right yeah, yeah it's happening with owen benjamin as well uh, and also, who was the other person? Did Owen oh, Benjamin Milo. get kicked off Patreon? Did he? Did? I'm, I'm not sure. You just mentioned Owen Benjamin. No, no, no. I was just saying Owen Benjamin is becoming more <laughs> radicalized. I don't know. <laughs> Some, <laughs> something to do that. But uh, also Milo. Yeah. Also, Milo uh, Yiannopoulos was banned, uh, taken off uh, Patreon as well from this. Really? Oh, because he just launched the Patreon only like uh, two weeks ago. So did he uh, get his Patreon removed? Yeah. Oh. Oh, Milo. <laughs> <laughs> Alrighty. Yeah. So yeah, so 
the but so there's these more controversial figures, right? Which have always been kind of getting purged. Uh, but the Sargon of Akkad one is interesting because because uh, generally he has wide support from this intellectual dark web. So let's define intellectual dark web. So I think it's like public intellectual who isn't doesn't hold particularly controversial opinions. They're more or less central or close to center. They're not particularly radical. They're saying things which I guess the vast majority of people tend to agree with. Mm -hmm. um, and Sargon uh, would be one of these, but he's a bit of a troll, a bit of a shit stirrer in his way of communicating things. But he's also, his principles are just classical liberal principles. That's what he's always espoused. And I think he got banned recently because he called, what was it? Does someone remember exactly what happened? Yeah, so he on this smaller channel, he was doing like some sort of interview and he was getting a lot of uh, people in the live chat from the alt right, just like making fun of him or I don't know, uh, ar arguing with him. I don't know do what they were exactly were, what they were doing. And he was complaining about them and then saying that they were acting like the people that they hated uh, and called them, say, s said that they were like white inwards uh, and, and then called them that again and then like in a mo moment of frustration and rage like yes yeah. police exactly and then but that was like four months ago and so what's hap why this is coming up now is because there was some sort of i don't know this is at least what uh has been talked about that there was the alt-right that were trying to get him kicked off of it because the alt-right doesn't like him uh but also uh the harder left also wanted uh him kicked off so so it's almost like there was this bipartisan uh attack between the alt-right and and the hard left in getting sargon kicked off of patreon it's kind of funny oh do you have anything to add to that okay no oh oh sorry yeah, no mm -mm. okay you did <clears throat> no <laughs> all right yeah uh so oh, then, I, okay, so, yep. Are you still in urgency? No, no, we're not in urgency anymore. All right. So we're, gonna, we're just <laughs> going to be walking through this. This is the main urgency, okay? It, it's apparent in the video. They're losing patrons, okay? Like, like they're, they're dropping like flies, okay? That's the real urgency. That's it. This right. was a this was a uh, a damage control video. This is a hey, we're working on something. Don't leave yet. Or if you do, you know, make sure we're still remaining connected. They're losing a lot of money very quickly. Mm. So yeah, and it's I, I guess because Sargon was a much larger figure. Like if it, this was somebody like Faith Goldie or or somebody like that that got kicked or like when Milo got kicked off of Twitter uh, off of Patreon, what was that? That was it on like December fourth, so it wasn't actually something that. I mean, it's. But Milo it's, had only been on there for a few weeks, right? Like he hadn't really amassed like a huge following. There. Like like a day, actually. Yeah. <laughs> like he, he got on it and quickly got taken off. And, Poor and so, Milo. <laughs> but yeah, it's only because Sargon is more in line, really, with uh, their their. Uh, I guess to worldview because like a lot of them do identify as like classical liberals right. and it would also and, probably be a lot of yeah there's a lot of crossover right with the belief yeah and so that yeah there's awesome. the recognition that if somebody like sargon can be uh maliciously uh, like targeted and taken down then there's very much that possibility that they themselves could do the same thing and so this is them trying to get ahead of the curve in setting up something to uh take care of that before it actually happens. Right. So the, uh, yeah, it's, yeah, all right. So we, to go back, so, okay, we've got intellectual dark web, Sam Harris, John B. Peterson, Dave Rubin are threatened by this. Tyler uh, elaborated on that quite well. Users and creators alike are seeking alternatives with economical sway. So for instance, Sam Harris canceled his Patreon pretty much a day uh, very quickly and then um, instructed users to move to website donations, and also users are withdrawing the Patreon donations. Creators are taking a financial hit. So 
there's a problem with this approach that they're doing. So let me go into what the problem is. So moving from Patreon to PayPal or credit card or even existing cryptocurrency solutions don't solve this issue of censorship. So why? Because, well, PayPal censors. Uh, Faith Goldie has been censored. And also PayPal will censor any journalist who criticizes Israel, which is interesting. Stripe, which is a fiat and credit card commerce platform. So pretty much they offer the most comprehensive way of accepting payments to uh, uh, credit card payments on the internet. So to accept credit card payments on the internet, you generally have to use something like Stripe.com, right? Or some other uh, credit card processor. So Stripe is the biggest one uh, is, and most comprehensive. Is yep. Stripe the one that had like some sort of security leak? Oh. Uh, what, like three months or so? Maybe it was longer, more than that. There was some, like, maybe it wasn't Stripe. It was some big credit card processor that... Right. Uh, I don't, it would be it, surprising it, if it was Stripe, because Stripe... Yeah, I'm thinking, it, it, I think it was yeah. probably some, it, some other t thing like Stripe, but I, I think you're right. It probably wasn't Stripe, right. actually. Yeah, so pretty much if you've seen, like, uh, the, there's, they have a thing called Stripe Checkout, uh, Enable Checkout, um, which people would have seen this form, uh, this type of form right here. Uh, so if you've mm -hmm. seen something that looks kind of like that, uh, which is very common, then you've probably used Stripe before. Uh, like, their branding is quite quite common, but otherwise people may not be using their user interface. It could just be using Stripe behind the scenes. Cause I mean, like we look at like, who's their actual clients. Uh, do they have a thing of uh, customers? Here we go. Uh, so, okay. So to explain how big they are, uh, we've got, yeah, these people, um, these people, da, 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 these people, uh, this is interesting. So digital ocean. And dog, okay, is this the tech industry? Yeah, so these are the tech industry, people using it, um, whatever. But I, was, I wonder if they're probably the majority of, uh, well, actually, I'm pretty sure they are the majority. So, what, so what's the issue then with Stripe? Well, Stripe also censors people. So Stripe withdraw the, uh, they kicked off BitChute, they kicked off Freestarter. So BitChute is an alternative Hello? to PayPal, decentralized, are you, wait, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, now we can. All right. Yeah, so BitChute is an alternative to PayPal. I mean, sorry, to YouTube. Uh, Freestarter is an alternative to Patreon. Uh, bu 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 uh, that one goes into some more. They also kicked off Gab, uh, which was a decentralized Facebook slash Twitter. Uh, mm -hmm. So if you if say if Sam Harris is using Stripe behind the scenes, right? But it's just like the majority of the tech influence industry supports companies like you know they support this type of censorship it's a very odd company who doesn't right so if you're moving to stripe or you're moving to like the typical tech company then you're going to have the same issue with decentralized solutions and peterson kind of went into this in the video where he's like it's also unclear like he talked about how they moved to i think subscribe star and the subscribe star had their ability to process payments kicked off so they said any type of centralized payment service is going to suffer from this. But the problem is to process MasterCard or Visa, you're using a centralized payment service. Uh, there isn't the ability due to the immense difficulty of processing MasterCard and Visa payments or bank payments uh, to do that yourself. Uh, so then you think, okay, well, what about cryptocurrency? Cryptocurrency could solve this. Well, Coinbase, which is the biggest cryptocurrency bank and also the biggest cryptocurrency commerce platform. So if we go commerce.coinbase.com, if you're accepting cryptocurrency payments online, you're probably doing it with Coinbase also because of the immense difficulty of processing crypto payments. Guess what? Coinbase also censors, right? So Coinbase kicked off WikiLeaks uh, from using it, right? But then it's also difficult. So you have censorship from all the finance things, but what are you actually gonna use to host your solution, right? Well, even the compute and hosting thing sensor. So DigitalOcean, they were listed under Stripe's company. Uh, sorry, under Stripe's customers. So DigitalOcean is one of the biggest um, uh, uh, internet hosts in the world. 
So when you host your website, like Reddit may be hosted on DigitalOcean or whatever, right? So here, DigitalOcean dropped Patreon, which was another alternative to Patreon. So Patreon hosted this solution on DigitalOcean. DigitalOcean says, we don't support you. And then they killed all of Patreon's servers. OK, what about Cloudflare? So Cloudflare also sends a daily storm up. So Cloudflare is a website. So we go cloudflare.com. Uh, so Cloudflare goes in front of websites to make them fast and provide a CDN and security. Uh, they, I think they power now like 10% of the internet, something more. And Cloudflare CEO, this is him, Matthew Prince, is actually a libertarian. Uh, a year ago, uh, in May so is, 2000, yeah, in May 2017, he kicked off um, the Daily Stormer from Cloudflare. Uh, Daily Stormer had been kicked off all the other financial services and kicked off all the other solution uh, hosting services, but then they were finally kicked off from Cloudflare. Now, being kicked off Cloudflare is important because there's a thing called like the Reddit kiss of death, or these common ideas of a kiss of death. So if you're a uh, product becomes really popular, or your website becomes popular, then the traffic may overwhelm the web server and the website crashes. Uh, it's common with DDoS attacks, which are also very popular. So Cloudflare goes in front, it caches the website, so that way, if you're serving some basic resources, then the websites uh, won't go down. Uh, they also do security against DDoS attacks and different hackers and whatnot. Um, and provide, they do all sorts of stuff. Like I use them for all our websites. So Jordan B. Peterson community website is, uh, has Cloudflare in front of it. So anyway, last year, people don't remember, the digital storm got purged from the internet. Um, and Cloudflare was one of the last ones to purge them. And this story kind of goes on to uh, here. I woke up this morning in a bad mood and decided to kick them off the internet, Prince wrote. It was a decision I could make because I'm the CEO of a major internet infrastructure company. He argued that it's important that we did today does not set a precedent. Um, but so far, this is the only case of censorship I could find from Cloudflare. Uh, and this is a year ago, and they seem to be working more with uh, regulators to prevent this type of regulation. So for instance, um, uh, yeah, they were getting uh, attacked by the SPLC. Yeah. So Prince says that when the Southern Poverty Law Center, so for instance, I think Peterson is listed as a, uh, what is it, a hate group, one of the leading groups pushing to take down the Daily Stormer. Prince says, he, Prince will say to them, here's the next site that you, oh, so when, sorry, when the Southern Poverty Law Center says, here's the next site that you should take down, I will say, dear SPLC, meet Cindy Con over at the Electronic Front Frontier Foundation, you guys should have a conversation. Tell us what we should do. Um, but he, so we also kind of see this type of role with the general tech world with uh, Facebook's, uh, uh, those Zuckerberg hearings with Facebook uh, that happened earlier in this year. And recently someone called Brian, uh, let's see, Brian Facebook memo. <sighs> okay, Brian Amaridge. So there's a so Brian Amridge worked at Facebook as a one of the head product uh, managers, um, and he was recently interviewed by the uh, Ayn Rand Institute. And in it, he says that there's an overwhelming consensus in the tech world that Facebook will move towards government regulation because they don't want to make the decisions themselves, which in some extent, that's kind of good because the tech industry wants to feel as if they can govern themselves. And it's kind of showing that they can't, uh, they're pro then projecting their liberal views onto the world or progressive views and then doing the censorship. So again, okay, so a quick summary. So you'll get censored from any funding platform. So PayPal will censor, Stripe will censor, so fiat crowd commerce platforms will censor, cryptocurrency commerce platforms will censor, and the places where you host your website will censor. So that's one of the problems which isn't addressed in that video that they haven't talked about, or at least they kind of just mention it. Now also the intellectual dark web are public information silos that operate confidentially. They do not have technical expertise, thus they are operating without a technical history uh, and also without the technical landscape. Uh, so we can see this with that video where Peterson and Rubin said, 
uh, such phrases as we have been talking to investors, bear with us, we have been working on. So like there's news that Peterson had been working on this thing uh, in, has kind of been, you know, it's now on kind of public with that video. He, previously, it was public knowledge that he was working on a uh, university, a new university system. Uh, and then, you know, recently, uh, I think he sent out a message to his Patreon subscribers a month ago saying, okay, he's now looking at doing an alternative to Patreon. But then in that video, he's actually saying, well, we've actually been working on a replacement to YouTube and the YouTube Red subscription model. Um, and that should facilitate the needs of Patreon. Uh, but so it's wait, like wait, wait. doing. Yeah. Who was working on a replacement for YouTube Red subscription model? So that's Peterson uh, in that video. So what Pe the terms Peterson actually used in that video uh, was that uh, he's been working on a. Uh, let me pull it up again. It sounded uh, like uh, like since he's been working on this for like six months, it sounded like his basic description of it sounded like it was more centered around authors and like how authors are supposed to be relating to their audience. I assume because of his like w what he's been doing with his, his book and his live tours and all that and trying to figure out some way to actually make his interactions with, with his audience some something better. And so he's creating a platform to hopefully help with that. I, I, I didn't get anything yeah. about that, how that was related to like video platform or anything like that. Yeah, I think it's so Peterson will mention... He, he doesn't uh, mention explicitly about video being a part of it, but he does mention that he's right. he is adopting the prior project to incorporate this new idea. Yeah, he's incorporating the subscription model uh, that of Patreon into it. But I don't know if it is related to YouTube Red at all, or or a similar thing to YouTube Red. But that would be that's another thing that's necessary is like how much uh, YouTube is censoring and deleting channels and things like that. It's I think he's got it in that list. Yeah. It, I can't All hear right, it. Here we go. All right. Uh, yeah, yeah. Because I, I was just going through it. I didn't want to uh, find the right oh, spot. Yeah, yeah. So here we go. Solution. And I've been working on for months, literally for months, it's been six months, I've been working on a system to allow authors and other people who engage publicly on intellectual issues to interact more effectively with their readers and viewers and listeners. And it occurred to me this week that with a bit of modification that that could serve exactly the function that we're hoping it would serve. So what we're going to try to do as fast as we possibly can is to set the system up on a subscriber model that's analogous to Patreon. It'll have a bunch of additional features, which I don't want to talk about right now, and I don't want to overpromise. but the system is, is because the system is new. But we're going to try to get... All right, so that's pretty much it. Um, so what I take from that is it sounds as if, like, okay, it's pretty much the fountain project that I've also been working on for the past six months, but I've had the idea for maybe a few years now. But... <laughs> the uh, but the issue there is uh, so he's saying uh, listeners and uh, the other terms. So it's not just like authors, but it's also yeah, yeah. like it's going to be a comprehensive uh, alternative to I guess YouTube, SoundCloud, uh, and then hopefully like readership as well, right? Like it, I, hopefully, I wouldn't read that much yeah. into it. Man. Yeah, yeah. It sounds more like where Patreon is just kind of the middleman. Be like somebody will have their YouTube account, and then they'll also have their Patreon account, and that they'll use Patreon to communicate with their closer uh, audience than the people. It, YouTube Red is, I don't know, right, it's kind of unrelated. By, no, so, okay, so there's YouTube introduced a feature uh, many, I don't know, maybe six months ago. Here we go, this thing, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, so, the uh, yeah. yeah, so YouTube it's Red has this thing the where there's... Uh, there's tiers where you can subscribe to. So I can become a PewDiePie member, right? Mm -hmm. And then I'm paying X dollars a month. And then based on my tier, I'm going to get, uh, you know, exclusive content on YouTube, right? Um, so, okay. yeah. <laughs> so then, um, so that's kind of the thing, which is, okay, this is 
YouTube's answer to Patreon. Um, but the issue no, 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 here no. is this is YouTube's answer what? to Twitch, man. This is YouTube. This is YouTube. This is exactly copied over from Amazon's current model on Twitch. Exactly. Even the tiered right. uh, subscriptions. Yeah. Well, okay. But it's still the um, like it's embedding the Patreon system into uh, you know video. So Twitch, like if you've got Patreon, then uh, then the Twitch thing would probably already meet your needs, right? Because it's what like because yeah, what is Patreon? Patreon is a subscribing subscription model with exclusive rewards based on tiers, right? So that's what I guess Twitch already offers. That's what this YouTube thing offers. Now then, Peterson also then specifically mentioned that to increase interaction with the audience. So yeah. that's something which is kind of new. So he's wanted to build this increased interaction and subscription tier, and then he's like, oh, this subscription tier would meet the needs of most public intellectuals who have a YouTube following. So now he's pushing that up and it's just like, but you know, so this is pretty much a project I've been working on on the cycle fountain. But then the other thing here is, is that the issue here is they've been working on this all private. Like this is the first I've heard from, I think most people has ever heard from Peteon. Uh, sorry, from Peterson, <laughs> Peteon. <laughs> Peterson that he's been working on this. Previously it was only we're working on a public university. Uh, like a new university system. Uh, so the, so this lack of public feedback mechanisms causes false start and worse user experiences. So for instance, Peterson self-authoring and understand myself. If you've ever used these projects, they're not really the best instances of modern web development techniques, user experiences, or quality assurance. Understand myself had several issues upon its launch. Uh, and I sent probably like 10 different emails to the web developer to outline some issues that they could fix. But it's also just like you compare that to like modern, uh, you know, the best instances of tech development like the past two years. And it's certainly so much to be used. Like, for instance, even on Understand Myself, uh, where's the like the, the, the buy link or the sign up link like right away, right? Like, how do I act like... Yeah, first you have to click learn more, then you have to then click buy now, right? And uh, so like when I'm uh, sending this to people, I need to actually send this link to people um, and rather than the actual home page. Like these, there's small little things that could be done to like increase conversion. Like that's something to learn from like, you know, marketers in the tech industry and like to do A-B testing to increase conversion and whatnot. There's so much learning. So it's like you compare it with like modern, Anyway, there's a lot of learnings to have uh, in, you know, that could be taken. But we also see this from Sam Harris's Waking Up app. So Product Hunt is a tool for tech makers to share what they've been working on. Um, so for instance, as upon launch, then Sam Harris shared his thing on Product Hunt. Uh, so we can see here, Ryan Hoover is the creator or the founder of Product Hunt. Uh, so, okay, I'll go up to the top. So waking up, you, you see product hunts. Uh, uh, so, okay, I'll explain what product is. So every day people post the things they, we might, you know, the we new might products. might be in the weeds here. Yeah, the new products Just, they're working on. Sam Harris posted waking up. Uh, someone ends up asking, uh, interesting to see this launch and surprise more authors, podcasters with large followings and expand the reach in the story. What's the backstory, Sam? Sam replies back, I think I can guess why more don't do it. Building an app is hard. I naively thought it was analogous in, analogous, analogous, analogous mm -hmm. to building a website. After a very protracted and expensive fault start, I finally found a team that I could trust to do it. The current version was built by the great people at MetaLab, and we've now put a full-time team in place to maintain and develop it. So he's gone into this in other cases where, you know, he thought he could just hire like a few developers to do it. He thought it would be as simple as building a website, uh, but it's actually really hard. Now, MetaLab, I think he had a few false starts and it both cost him many years and a lot of money. Now, MetaLab is actually one of the best tech consultancies uh, there is on the planet. So for instance, they built Slack, they built uh, Coinbase. So you have an amazing idea do you hire MetaLab to kind of do the implementation? So Slack is a billion dollar business. Coinbase is a billion dollar uh, business, uh, what not. Uh, they're very talented people. Uh, so it's just like, finally, Sam realized, oh, I actually have to hire people who know what they're doing. Uh, and then they did it. But there's also like an instance where it's just like, he could have just asked the tech industry. 
like what's the solutions here like utilize the community but utilize the potential of the community so again the tech industry has been working on a lot of these problems for the last decade uh so there's in regards to computer authorization funding and video so but, but just to keep on this point here right which is that like and so Peterson, he's been working on these things in secret for the last six months. Sam Harris worked on this meditation app. And it's just like, like we were discussing before this call, what they really need is a Lawai, like PewDiePie's like last week on Reddit or whatever it is you submitted, uh, where there's a feedback mechanism. Because right now, uh, you know, Peterson could have talked about, hey, these are what I'm planning and then facilitated discussion with the tech industry to work on these things and the tech industry could tell them or sam harris like you know he could have said i want to build this waking up app help me facilitate discussion with the tech industry so we know what's the best way to go about this and they could have directed him to metalab or they could have told him you know the complexities to weigh things up um mm -hmm. it, so that way there isn't these false starts with peterson being so focused on hierarchy and things like that he's very much built for himself a uh, very individualistic kind of uh, system where there is no any any sort of hierarchy for uh, communication or, or structure or anything like that. It's kind of the shared commonality between everyone in the IDW is kind of this distrust for any sort of institution or things or, or yeah. anything like that, like unable to trust anyone besides themselves to actually run something. Uh, that they would put their name yeah. on. But it's also, they, they still have a two tier hierarchy, right? Which is themselves as a public intellectual and then their entire audience. And the audience, like they, so the audience, Peterson will talk to the audience, right? But there isn't any feedback mechanism for the audience to talk to Peterson. Um, Aside from like, like none of the, yeah. like that. I mean, and, and, and also like it, it, during each of his live events, there's a, Q and A process that occurs, but even then, it's like, what he'll get maybe a thousand questions and he'll answer five or something like that. It's very small, right? And so this is, uh, but there's also other issues with Patreon. So I was a Patreon early Patreon supporter of Peterson, uh, and I was on the Q and A tier, and like half the time, I didn't even know the Q and As were happening because I was just like, how the hell do I actually participate in this? And it's just like, okay. I think he sends off Patreon messages, but then he does it when I'm, you know, I'm in Australia, like it's when I'm sleeping and then I wake up and it's kind of closed and he's already done it. And then, um, so there's no chance to actually like do that. And he will only address the top ants, like the top voted questions. So you need to get your question in at the beginning for it to be voted up. Otherwise, if you post too late, your question will never be seen. Um, and you have to pay for that facilitation. So like, you know, there's plenty of thing like, you know, so Peterson, I guess, rather than utilizing, you know, hiring a team to then kind of facilitate community communication to get it up to him or using something like the Reddit, the Y approach that PewDiePie does, then, you know, he's just decided I'm going to build an entirely new platform. Right. And one of the other instances is if we go to like discuss uh, the Jordan B. Peterson uh, the community, which is the discourse forum. Uh, we set up. So this forum integrates well with Patreon if he used it back in the day. So you could have uh, discussion forums exclusive to certain Patreon tiers. Uh, and, you know, these things, like Discourse is a fantastic forum software. Uh, it's using like the best standards there are or, or the best learnings from the tech industry there are for how to run a tech forum. Um, oh, sorry, how to run a discussion forum. And, you know, you can have these private forums. You can have whatever you, you want. If there's private messaging, there's payment tiers, there's flair. Yeah, the, the more you participate in the community, the more permissions you get. It's like the Stack Overflow Stack Exchange model. So the more value you're giving to the community, the more ability you have, uh, rather than just, oh, that person's posted a Twitter. Hold up. Can you use the... Are you getting distracted? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm getting distracted. Sorry. If the um, yeah. So there's uh, the. What was I saying? Ah, uh, yeah. So there, so 
the more you participate, the more value. You, so the more value you add, the more a bit like th so these solutions, like the Stack Exchange solution of of uh, uh, facilitating, the more value you get, the more permissions you get. These things have been around for 10 years or more, right? Like the tech world has kind of solved these problems. Like the with this forum, the more you participate, the or the more value you add, the automatically you get leveled up in the community and you have a larger voice. Um, mm -hmm. the, so, you know, they could have used this to facilitate uh, these discussions. Like, like this is obvious for people in the tech world. Um, yeah. Oh, shit. It, what did I do it, it, it seems like the, the, the members of the IDW are not really interested in creating some sort of community. It seems like what they enjoy doing is like having conversations amongst themselves, kind of uh, with the, interacting with fellow el elites and things like that. And, and like, like kind of like what Joe Rogan does, like he, he, he likes just talking to really interesting people and that that's what he's interested in. The only sorts of communities that occur are those that kind of create themselves and then they might see from the outskirts. There's no interaction at all, really. Yeah. So just uh, to go into this for background reading, so this is the discourse website. It goes way more into this type of uh, situation here about, you know, the permission models that they kind of have uh, and the unique uh, stuff, right? Mm -hmm. um, so they go into it, trust system. Right, so it's kind of like it's self-moderating, and the more you participate, the more abilities you get. Like it actually rewards people who add a lot of value, and there's ways to facilitate converting value added from the community to get that back to Peterson. Like it facilitates the discussion. Like Stack Exchange is the most popular uh, solution for this. They kind of uh, facilitated that. So somewhere I think they'll have like about us, and then they go into this. So this is like the tech war. Like. So, okay, we have 3.9 billion answers submitted uh, uh, up, uh, what was it? Do, they, we, do we have users? How many users, comments? Oh yeah, 5 million users have been utilizing this type of technology where you, you know, the more you participate, the more you, mm -hmm. you know, power you get. And Stack um, Exchange is just kind of like where coders share different, uh, like, problems that they've had and like asking questions for how to fix it and things like that, right? Yeah. So Stack, Stack Exchange is like the company uh, as well as the overall community. So we'll see there's all sites. So these are all the different sites that they facilitate um, uh, this Q&A type process for, the self-regulating mm -hmm. thing. Stack Overflow, which we see here, so well, they're kind of more programming focused. So Stack Overflow, we see these are uh, uh, you know questions and answers. I kind mm -hmm. of thing. So, you know, people mark something as an answer, but it, let's click on someone who answered this. Right? Yeah, it's kind of like Quora, but for all technical, uh, like, uh, yeah. digital but, issues. Yeah, but based on the reputation you receive, there's, uh, then you get the ability to moderate the community. That's the, the real key thing. So the more you add, the more value you add, the more power you get. Um, which is so it and it's the same thing here like the more you participate on the, a discourse forum the more power you automatically get you get access mm -hmm. to uh, more private forms of communication you get more access to moderating the community um and it's kind of like so, a bottom up self-organization for people so like it's it's, n it's the, the people that are actually uh being valuable to the, the the site itself automatically gets upgraded essentially so yeah. you don't have to tinker around with it and that's the thing like peterson it seems like he he likes to have his finger in all the pies like knowing what's going on with all the things underneath him and so yeah but i mean like so... you have to let go of in order it, yeah. it, in order to i mean especially with how how large of an audience he has like it's too it, in order for it to go anywhere it has to actually uh get outside of his control somewhat i think yeah but and that's the thing like they don't have to worry about losing control to bad actors because these things help prevent that and it's just like so for peterson's situation like you know for the maps and meaning series here's like all of the stuff like these are for like things created for his maps and meaning series these are people's lecture notes that they kind of took for it you know you can search like if i search children 
right? Then I'm going to come up with everyone's lecture notes for children um, kind of stuff. So, you know, the end, you know, you could have add like a little private tier where on this Patreon thing, you can facilitate discussion and then, you know, just facilitate, does that feedback good enough today? All right, so, okay, so. Is Discourse have, able to yep. be accessed through like a phone? Is, is there an app for Discourse? Uh, yeah, so they do the web app thing. So you okay. on the web app, you add it to a thing. So it's like a web app that can function as like a native app. You'll get your notifications and everything. All right, interesting. Yeah. Okay, I'll have to set that up for yeah. now. All right, so tech industry has been working on these problems for the last decade. So specifically, let's talk about the thing you know, of this urgency, right? Like the urgency is Patreon is shutting down, people are getting censored off the tech ecosystem, right? So let's talk about compute. What's happening to solve this compute thing? How can you actually build an alternative, right? So like Sargon, he could choose to host a website, but that website could be kicked off digital ocean, right? So well, then there's Ethereum D apps or Ethereum decentralized apps, but decentralized apps don't need to be built on Ethereum. Uh, so the state of the dApps, uh, this goes into all the different apps that are being built with decentralized technology. So this is tech that no matter where in the world, it can't go down. Um, so there's no way to shut off its computing power. Um, there's also centralized yet cost-effective solutions. So this, in, this is generally cost-effective is the serverless uh, aspect, and but they're still kind of centralized. So Zeit is the biggest player. Oh, what is it? Right uh, now, Zyde. <sighs> oh, Zyde.co. Let's update that. So these people allow you to scale uh, uh, code things very easily, and then scale it out to many people. Very like it's a very simple development workflow. Scales it out pretty much free deployment, especially when partnered with Cloudflare. So there's an alternative right now to. Uh, uh, your typical chat system kind of built on this, which is Spectrum. Um, and we can kind of fiddle with it. But a lot of apps are now being built on this serverless stack. Cloudflare also have their own solution called Workers. So these are centralized yet cost effective. So Zite, maybe they would agree to then censor you. But this one kind of relies on whoever you're hosting your compute with don't censor you. Um, considering Sargon would probably be fine under Cloudflare, because uh, he's not a neo-Nazi, I think that would be fine, because Cloudflare's only killed off Daily Stormer, and they've made a commitment. Now, you could also self-host, right? So if you want to self-host, then you would use, like, the HashiCorp suite. Uh, this is how to run your own computing infrastructure. They have all these stuff. These are all incredibly difficult problems. Uh, developer operations, I mean, like, like, Amazon earns more money from its developer operations services like AWS than it does from selling products. Like, say, and it's just like people like. Wait, wait, wait. Say that again. Amazon earns more money from doing what? From its developer operations than it does like selling products on Amazon, I'm pretty sure. Let's see. Amazon AWS revenue the, uh, percentage. So, so what does that mean? There, uh, what, what, what? Okay, okay, okay sorry. Margin, not sorry. total volume of sales. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. My my. It turns out I'm incorrect on this. So okay. Dot dot. Uh, AWS. AWS accounted for eight percent of Amazon's okay. forty-four point eight billion dollars. So AWS ruled in three point two billion. Uh -huh. So eight percent. So what does AWS do? What, what are they just like? What 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 is their what function do they roll? Uh, what do they do? So AWS is so yeah. the calls and stuff. Oh, okay, gotcha. Like yeah. So it's it's the same thing with Google, right? So Google, you go cloud.google.com, and like because Google needs infrastructure to host websites, right? Like to run Google, they need to develop infrastructure now. Is it like, you know, so what they all realize is these are difficult problems which require thousands of engineers to solve. Well, we can solve that and then we can sell our solutions to other people. Same thing for Amazon. How do we sell the solutions we develop to other people? Right. So uh, it's uh, so it's pretty much like AWS is what Amazon uses to self-host. 
uh, you know, to host AWS and they sell their solutions to other developers. Google Cloud does it. Google Cloud's huge um, kind of stuff. Uh, Microsoft's uh, Azure platform is the same thing. So if we go like azure.microsoft.com, um, here's Microsoft's cloud platform, right? Um, yeah. So like Apple, for instance, they uh, they host across the I, I think all three of these uh, for resiliency. I don't think Apple particularly hosts their own servers. They use Google services or they use Microsoft servers, uh, which is interesting. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Um, yeah, OK. So if you want to do it yourself, then like rather than using existing cloud providers, then you have to use like the HashiCorp open source suite, which are these things. You need to buy like Mac minis, and you need to configure it all yourself. That's yeah, pretty much the best option there. Minis. What is wrong with you? What? Mac minis? Yeah, they're generally really good for uh, for server, for servers, yeah, like Mac really mini server good. farms. But uh, the new ones that just came out, they're actually quite good for the performance. So you'll see, like, this is your typical cloud provider. <laughs> uh, yeah. That's funny. Uh, all right, um, but it's also just cost effective, right? Like you could get these custom made servers kind of stuff, but they'll cost you like ten thousand um, dollars. So you, the the immediate solution would be those two options. So if you want something purely unsensible, you have decentralized compute. So Ethereum, like de the decentralized apps, the most common form of this is Ethereum D apps or Steam apps. Then also there's self-hosted solutions, which could be HashiCorp and Mac Minis. Otherwise, you can try and work with the tech industry to try and make sure libertarian values are promoted within the industry. Authorization, this is the other thing. How the hell do you guarantee the people who are using your web service are legitimate people and not bots? How do you, like, if you're going to create an alternative to YouTube or an alternative to Patreon, how do you ensure that people aren't using it for money laundering? How do you ensure that people aren't doing, you know, entirely illegal things? Or how do you make sure that it doesn't get hacked or seized by bots, right? So the most common one, uh, so any centralized adoption service here is going to be superior. So Cloudflare is a incredibly common one. Uh, that's why people use Cloudflare because they provide the um, this type of security and protection for people. For user authentication, then Auth0 is the most common one. So they make sure that when people sign up to your website, uh, they're actually legitimate users, and they they do a lot of advanced uh, stuff to make sure, and they work, you know, they meet all the compliance stuff that you have to meet to actually be a legal company, uh, which is interesting. So if you want to do it yourself, I mean, you're probably going to be operating your company illegally <laughs> because these problems are just so damn hard uh, to solve. And also, uh, the reason why these centralized solutions work so damn well is because they aggregate the data from their billions upon billions of uh, requests probably every hour to then find out exactly what the latest threats are. So like Cloudflare is able to do its DDoS protection better because it powers like 10% of the internet. So if a threat starts merging somewhere, they already know all these threats that are happening and they can monitor it correctly. Whereas you're just having it doing it yourself, there's no way to protect yourself against these DDoS attacks and many uh, new type of uh, security threats uh, that mm -hmm. exist. Um, so the, the decentralized app world solves this by saying, well, you can have an account, but you've got to pay like a dollar or ten dollars to use it. Right? Like that's the so they're like, oh, if we just charge people money to interact with the system, then we rule out bad actors because otherwise it costs bad actors money to interact with the system and they'll run out of money. Uh, so that's like the typical thing. Then there's Steam, which is one of the ways of solving this. Uh, so if we go to steam.com, then it's just like, oh, everyone can post for free, but then uh, things like voting and whatnot cost money, which is how we make sure that something is legitimate. So anyone can post, that can be spammed, but you are uh, uh, to then verify or curate real content from fake content, then you need to pay for that. 
Uh, so that way, you know, someone posts something, but it, it's quite complicated. Like it's a new solution for, um, for that type of solving, right? So you have decentralized solutions that are incredibly advanced, super easy to adopt. They meet all the compliance and security needs, right? And then the decentralized stuff is completely emerging. Um, okay, so let's talk about funding, right? Now, there's already plenty of alternatives to Patreon. Uh, the, the Bureau Pay is what, probably the most famous one out of these, right? Flatter is also very famous. They've been around for probably 10 years or more now. Uh, Flatter was set up, I think, or oh, I had some involvement by Aaron Swartz, um, if I remember correctly. Bounty Source, Buy Me Coffee, da 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 um, but okay, but a little history lesson, right? So there was a thing called Gradapay uh, back in 2013 uh, or earlier. This was set up by a guy called Chad Wickaker. Now, Gradapay, if I search BL Upson and Medium, I did a tweet about a, sorry, a Medium blog post. Um, da -da -da -da. Is it on the beverage one? Yeah, it said beverage. Oh, it's like, oh, it's right when there. radicals collide. Fifth, no, fifth one down, fifth one down, fifth one down. Oh, okay. Mixed dialogue. Okay, here we go. All right, so what happened was Gratipe came out. Uh, they were, um, so weekly donations, right? So anyone can donate. It's a weekly donation model. Now, they had constant issues with compliance with payment processes. Uh, they used a decentral, like a more open company that handled payment processing, so it was an alternative to Stripe, and they just couldn't meet government regulations, and they just couldn't meet the regulations by the payment processes, and they continued getting booted. They got kicked from the original one, they got kicked from Stripe, and then they moved to PayPal. I think they had issues with PayPal. It was like just a very uh, lot of issues, and now, most of those compliant issues have kind of been solved because Libera Pay accepts Stripe and it accepts PayPal. But back in 2013, the infrastructure wasn't already there. But the other thing is very similar to what's happening right now with Patreon is Chad Wickaker, Wittaker, the founder who promoted radical transparency, so public conversations only, cannot cater to the social justice warrior crowd who wanted to contribute and participate privately. So, which caused a fork and a max exodus to Liber LiberaPay and to Patreon, uh, something Gratipay never recovered from causing a max exodus. So again, in 2000, like Patreon only took off in the last few years, but before Patreon took off, there was, Gratipay was the biggest uh, competitor to Patreon. And Gratipay had way more users in the tech industry. Uh, but what happened was uh, SJW uh, wanted you know, to be able to, you know, do their uh, conniving, I guess, in private. And Chad's like, no, everything has to happen publicly because otherwise we could risk being corrupted. And anyway, then the SJW crowd says, well, you're not meeting our needs. They made a massive campaign. Radapay was forked. The code base was forked to become the Berapay and everyone moved. Um, uh, like they lost like 90% of their revenue. And it's just like funny because most of, uh, Gratipay's users weren't like, you know, like the Patreon user base. They weren't full on libertarians. They were just people who want to get paid. And it wasn't just tech industry people either. It was just anyone. Uh, it's like the same kind of use case for Patreon. But what happened was we're after the SJW campaign, people sympathetically side with, you know, who they consider to be the oppressed group or like the minority. So what happened was like, yeah, most of the pay users were not libertarians, nor were they SJWs, but people side with SJW causes. Like, the mob will side with the SJW cause. So I wrote this blog post back in the day when this huge issue came to a fall between the two key players who were involved in this. So it was Chad Whitaker versus um, Shanley, um, who's the founder of Model View Media, and kind of talking about the different considerations that were happening. But it... Gratipay could not recover. So the same kind of issue could happen with Patreon, whereas, you know, if people move from uh, Patreon to, uh, you know, Patreon or whatever X other service there is, then people may still stay on Patreon because then it could perceive the alternative as being like this kind of hate group 
uh, thing and most people don't want to be involved in that controversy. Like it, it's something like it's just like a history lesson that's very important. Uh, but whether or not it'll play out the same, uh, considering how much following the intellectual dark web has, is still uh, maybe this time it'll be different. Maybe it'll play out differently. Um, yeah. Uh, okay, and then uh, in 2016, I set up this alternative called Sponsored, which was to try and pull in the sponsor information from all the different services, so Patreon, Open Collective, Gratapay, as well as independent services, so Stripe, PayPal, Bank Transfer, correlate all the sponsor information and expose it via JSON so then people can utilize it, provide an interface where sponsors can update the sponsor details, analytics, blah, 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 right? So this is like a way to like kind of mediate the differences between the different ones and provide like a fallback mechanism. But then Patreon didn't really give us the data we needed to implement it accurately. And also, you know, I ran out of funding. Like, you know, I'm just working on this on my side without any other funding, right? But like people just generally don't care about building these alternatives. Like, <laughs> all right, so then we have that issue, right? So the history of attempts. There's also these considerations. Right, which is centralized solutions have superior solutions and resources. So there's superior adoption, compliance, and security. So let's say we want to build Patreon. What do we do? Right. Well, we're going to have to receive payments from people. Right. Uh, accept payments. That's that's obvious enough. Uh, we need then a monthly subscription service. Stripe provides all these things very easily. Right. We need a guarantee that we're not participating in fraud and people aren't, you know, being attacked and all the rest. Stripe also, you know, facilitates this out of the box. Uh, we need to be able to build a marketplace so we can receive money on other people's behalf as a service and then give that money to them, right? We need to be able to route payments from one payer to a different receiver rather than just consolidating the payments to ourselves. We need to also be able to pay out the payments to people. Guess what? Stripe provides this too, right? And these are all things like out of the box. And these are like, like these are such huge companies, right? Like Stripe to solve this because the amount of difficulty of these problems, right? Like, and they would do it so damn effectively. And with all the compliance, and like they would actually solve it well. So, you know, but Stripe censors. So let's, let's pause at, you know, this idea for censorship. But we need to like take these considerations you know, I can't like if you're going to build an alternative, you can't be like, oh, these things don't matter. Like, no, they do matter. Like, you need the ability to do payments. You need the ability to do subscriptions. You need the ability to do markets. You need the ability to do payouts. These are such difficult problems. Um, all right. The new, so new solutions are, are appearing. So Steam, Steam.com is one of the biggest ones here. So this could be an alternative to Stripe and whatnot. Yep. And that's on, that's like in. yeah that that's like a video platform and or social media platform that actually has uh, like a a cryptocurrency kind of system built into it right where like people right. can actually earn income from posting memes and things like that yeah so there's Steam it's uh, and there's the tube uh, sorry the tube dot video I think so Steam is a Blockchain technology, I guess cryptocurrency would be fitting for it. Um, oh, actually, I wonder if they are blockchain. But yeah, they're, they're pretty much in the crypto space. So Steemit is an alternative to medium.com, uh, which is like a blogging software. Uh, people can post things, and then people vote uh, on stuff. And then you, know, you see here, so this person, I'm not sure what's happening there, but this person earned $314 for this blog post. This person earned $143 on this blog post, so in 13 hours. This person earned $161 for this blog post, right? Uh, so what happens is, like, you can vote for things, but you need already to have some money to vote. So you contribute. If your stuff gets voted up, you get some money, and then you can then vote to the extent you have money for. The YouTube works, works are very similar. So this person earned three dollars from this video this person earned two dollars from this video um kind of thing this person earned 23 dollars from this video so post for does free. anyone actually like um take steam it seriously like is there any like public personality or something that is active uh, like has, is focused on steam it or or 
one of these alternate platforms exactly. Uh, uh, let's see. Let's see. I don't know, when, when I've looked at it, it seems like it's mostly the, the types of people that are just trying to generate income online. Like, there's no central focus or anything like that. It's just them trying a whole bunch of different things and then seeing what actually makes the most money and then keep on doing that. Yeah. Like, so I, think I saw um, yeah. Tim Pool. He's on BitChute, and he's right. uh, putting content yeah, up BitChute on there. BitChute uses uh, uh, Steam as well. Mm, uh, as their, their currency and reward system. So this is another alternative to DTU. So, but that's the thing, which is these things uh, draw the crowds of, you know, this more uh, libertarian um, and also censored crowd. Like if you're censored or you're libertarian, then it aligns with, you know, well, if you're censored, you've got no other option. You have to go to these services. And then otherwise, like, you know, the audience is still on YouTube. Um, so okay so because most of them they will still post on youtube and they'll just post as well on these alternatives uh but so if we look into how steam works so we got steam this is all about this kind of model so what happens is uh rather than there being a currency and you buying that currency uh instead what happens is or mine is mining this currency instead there's this currency called steam it's released over time uh, to the people who the network determined should deserve it based on their contributions. So every uh, three seconds or so, or I think, um, you know, that, yeah, every three seconds, the money is then distributed to the people who contributed in the last three seconds. Um, so that way, so you contribute, your thing gets voted up or whatever, then you get some money uh to then use and then contribute back so it's kind of like a a blockchain solution to like the stack exchange slash uh discourse option um then they have steam connect for the identity layer uh they have smt.steam so steam smart media tokens so these are ways of building platforms on top of it uh so d2 rather than just using directly steam and what steam supports itself like the steam it system they could start building their own type of uh community with their own kind of token but it's still based on the steam ecosystem so it's like steam's answers to the erc20 tokens by ethereum uh, but ethereum is different right because ethereum uh, is still something you have to own well, Ethereum's going about these things very differently. Steam seems to be the one to kind of facilitate this. But Steam recently, with the crypto downturn, they laid off 70% of the staff. Uh, their costs, like, you know, they're kind of running this blockchain technology themselves. It's not like an open mining system. Miners don't get rewarded. Um, and, you know, the issues with adoption here is you can't vote without earning or paying money. You can't comment without paying money. You can't reply without paying money. You can't even power up to get more Steam power. Again, and you can't post without paying money because you have to contribute, earn value, and then with that value, you can now participate. So it kind of uh, creates a situation where uh, the people who were early influencers have so much power and so much sway. Uh, it's great and that it we kind solved of... all those problems, John. <laughs> uh, right. So, okay. So... There is other solutions, but again, they don't take into account so many of these things, right? So there is emerging stuff to happen. But again, it's just like these aren't things you can solve without, you know, the any consideration from the people who have been working on these problems for decades. Right? Like these are such difficult problems. All right. So what about video? What's the alternatives for video uh, for what Pearson kind of wants to build? What's like the alternatives for building a YouTube or like a conversation platform for intellectual dark web? So uh, 2012, 2013, uh, and the beginning of 2014, I worked on this idea myself called Interconnect. Uh, this is a global community. You can, like, it's kind of, imagine a face wall of everybody. You can click on them and then have a conversation with them. You can view people's past conversations and you can reply to those conversations, right? Uh, but it's more facilitated around real time conversations. So you see everyone, who is this? Tyler. Ah, come on, man. <laughs> and, uh, I'm right, so, to be John. Yeah. All right. So let's look at the design work uh, that we did up for this solution. Right. So this is a little desktop app that you have on your computer. Uh, how can I zoom in on? Uh, fuck. 
Uh, okay, there we go. Right, so this is a desktop app that lives on your computer. Uh, you see someone, you can start a call with them or leave a video mail, right? And once you've done a call, then it gets kind of saved to your profile. So inside your little community, you see everyone's faces, you can call them. Uh, and then also eventually you can click on the profiles and browse the conversations that you know this person has had, whether they've made it public or private. This is an idea from 2013, um, right? And, and But however, the tech ecosystem was not ready yet. WebRTC, which was uh, what this, what YouTube Live uses was still under development then, wasn't feasible, and there was no business model to figure this out. There wasn't any of this IPFS or decentralized hosting solutions. Right now, okay, what about currently? Well, there's now recorded streaming solutions. Uh, sorry, recorded streaming. Wait. Oh, okay, yeah. So, sorry, I should say streaming of pre recorded video. All right, so we've got DTube. Uh, DTube kind of goes into it. It's based on Steam. This one's another one, Viewly. Uh, you can watch stuff, and it's kind of, I think it uses Steam behind the uh, background, but I'm not sure because uh, you can't really tell. But OK, let's just click on this, see how well it performs. What is going on? That's like a very common YouTuber thing, right? But you'll see here, like, there's not really any way to adjust the quality that you're receiving. Because um, one of the most difficult things about video streaming, uh, and DTube uh, has kind of had to figure this out, which is you have to upload it, you have to encode it in all the different formats um, that a user could receive. You need to go it on all the different quality levels, and you need to allow seamless adaption between them. Whereas the decentralized solutions like Popcorn Time, uh, really, DTube, like DTube, I think does have a quality thing, and that's because what they do is they get the uh, what is it, DTube? Right, so they get the uh, video, um, and when you upload it, then they are paying for servers somewhere to then convert that video into all the different formats, and it just seems like right now it just doesn't work, right? Like these things are quite still emerging and are unstable. So, you know, you're either downloading like a 4K video or 1080p video on your mobile device from a streaming connection with a poor internet quality, in which case the video just won't load, or you've correctly been able to encode these things. Yeah, um, infrastructure is just not there. Right. So, like, if we look at centralized solutions, so what happens if you want to build uh, YouTube but with uh, a centralized solution? Like, this is the Cloudflare Stream is the best solution there is right now for building an alternative uh, to YouTube. But it costs $1 per thousand minutes viewed and $5 per thousand minutes of video stored. But they handle all the super difficult parts of video streaming. Uh, you upload your video, they convert it to all the formats to do the adaptive quality for the viewer and all the rest. See, like, you know, we get all this, but it's also figuring out what my browser supports and figures out what my internet speed is and it adapts the video accordingly on the fly. Like these are such difficult problems, um, right? And, you know, their solution is there. So, you know, just I just mentioned that for the current stuff, right? Okay, so video, uh, okay, um, maybe I should put the considerations first. Yeah, that would have been a better idea. Um, all right, so, okay, so the considerations, uh, video hosting and streaming is a very difficult and expensive problem. Also, YouTube's terms of service and its developer policies prevent leveraging YouTube for building competitive services. And so, for instance, if you want to build an alternative to YouTube, uh, you can't really use the in YouTube embedded media player uh, unless you follow all these specific terms. You can't download captions. The reason for the captions is because each caption contribution is owned by the contributor. who granted a license to YouTube. Any alternative has no way of finding out who the caption authors were and getting licenses and has no way to then get licenses from them. So they would be violating the, the copyright of the captions. So all the captions need to be redone uh, if you're going to move to a different thing. Um, now, OK, so what about the video pieces? So search, uh, or you know, a different alternative, search is an incredibly difficult problem. So for instance, we have uh, search.jordanbpeterson.com, right? 
So this thing, if we search like children, uh, this can be implemented in one day for free uh, using like Zeit uh, or Cloudflare workers, right? Super easy. So what happens with this? I get things based on just children. There's no relevancy, I guess, of these searches. It's just based on, you know, what has children in this. If I do like a more advanced search, like, uh, what is it? Children's story bedtime. Uh, see, like, it's not doing any type of relevancy. Like, am I getting, it's just now saying, okay, it's just showing me these bad time stuff, right? But as we know from our experiences with Google or DuckDuckGo and things like that, relevancy is a really, uh, you know, it's useful. Like, search products need to provide this. So if we look for, okay, if we don't want to become Google, then what's the alternative for people who are, you know, building their own uh, YouTube? Right, so then the biggest one is Algolia, and their solution for this is superior than anything that anyone else can host themselves. The self-hosted solutions are like Lucene, uh, there's another one, but they're just not at the scale that these centralized solutions can offer. Um, so we can see, like this is kind of like str the Stripe of search. So for instance, they do typo tolerance. You can adjust how certain things should happen, like how search and search stuff. You can do the, it does the suggestions. It does all these like advanced, does like multilingual, figures out, uh, you know, pants is also trousers or shorts, does relevancy, uh, custom ranking, A-B testing, uh, personalization. So when you do a search, it actually knows what your intentions are as an individual and it will help you find the content that you're actually wanting because it knows about you, right? And these things, are, so this goes all into the personalization option, right? So for instance, sport will mean a different thing to a movie fan versus a sneaker addict. Um, and these are hard things. Like, you know, this thing doesn't take this into account at all. And yet they could have used a Golia for this and it's still implemented in a day, right? But right now it's just like these captions, these aren't owned by Peterson. These are owned by the people who submitted these captions and they're owned therefore, like only YouTube has a license to use these captions, which is interesting. Um, so it's, it's a bit dodgy. So the guy who did this posted on huge on Reddit and I think he sold it to Peterson and she was like, this is another thing. Like Peterson could have facilitated the tech community, got their opinions and then done this as an open source project in a day and actually done it with like a superior search solution. All right. Hosting and streaming, uh, decentralized solutions. So IPFS and torrents. So popcorn time uses torrents. IPFS specific is like DTube uh, and BitChute. Now, if you want to provide redundancy, so for instance, you you put a video onto uh, you know DTube, right? You need to host that video yourself, or you upload it to a server. Now, that server needs to guarantee that, like, the service needs to guarantee there is at least one copy available of that video, uh, because you know, like, with YouTube, you upload it to Google services servers, everyone has access to it. But say, for instance, if I'm doing a decentralized solution, I'm using IPFS or torrents, like I could host that video on my laptop, but as soon as I close my laptop, then no one has access, right? Or so what you need is you need to upload it to somewhere called a pinning service or a redundancy service. For IPFS, the uh, one of the ones that recently launched is Pinata.cloud. So you say, okay, I wanna guarantee my YouTube video is going to be available. Um, and you pay them to pin or host or provide that uh, redundancy for it. Um, and so people do mail with torrents as the seeding guarantees. Pardon? That is yeah. cultural appropriation. It's also weird because you don't really want your data to be exploded when people whack it, yeah, right? It's, it's, it's yeah, you're a... inviting people to hit it with a stick. That's crazy. <laughs> so, so anyway, the cost for this solution is 200 terabytes a month. I mean, two, sorry, $200, 200 US, uh, so 200 US dollars per terabyte per month to provide guarantees that your IPFS content is going to be available. So for instance, if you look at DTube Reddit, one of the most common uh, complaints that you'll see is people then complaining that my uh, uh, my videos have disappeared. And then people will be like, oh, well, it's because they went popular. And the person is just like, wait, what? And, be, and then it's just like, well, what's my options? 
Oh, here we go. All right. And so this lady's like lost all her YouTube videos. And it's just like they just recommend have an offline backup next time. Right. And it's just like, like this isn't a like this is a huge issue with these alternatives. Um, you need to be able to provide redundancy, but redundancy for decentralized solutions is unbelievably expensive. Right, like 200 terabytes a month versus like Cloudflare streams like $25 a month. Or well, Cloudflare stream does it by minutes, right, instead. Uh, so, okay, there's also no real adaptive streaming quality solution. So all the different encodings have to be generated by the platform. The video player needs to manually support all different encodings. The protocol designed for file syncing considerations, not streaming. So if we look at, like, if we go a uh, DTube, a uh, uh, GitHub, uh, then we will notice, uh, okay, they will have something here, um, IPFS uploader. So this uh, kind of uploads it to their service and it will run all these different encoding things for it. But they're paying for the server costs. And it's still not going to be doing it to the extent that Cloudflare Stream is doing it. Because also these torrents and IPFS just aren't built for streaming content that's built for file syncing they're not built for streaming which is a very interesting issue like problem so okay we got cloud for stream so a user who but it's also costs are prohibitive to people building alternatives so a user who watches five hours a week of video on the platform will cost 15 dollars a year a user who uploads five hours a week will cost the platform 78 dollars a year now this is the cheapest solution that is actually going to be able to compete with YouTube. Now, okay, also for captions. Well, there's no legal way to download the captions from YouTube. Uh, there is YouTube download to do it, but it's you know, going to have an issue. So then, okay, well, what about transcription services? Well, you can use IBM's Watson. Uh, so a user who uploads five hours a week will then cost $312 a year to transcribe the videos. Uh, so it's two cents a minute, uh, but it does provide way better um, caption quality and it even does like speaker recognition. So there's multiple speakers that will recognize the speaker. Um, so it is quite good. But again, this is a very hard cost for people to get started. So it's just like so many considerations here like need to happen. And, you know, it's just like, hey, it's great that JVP and whatnot have investors. Right, but it's just like, well, why don't you direct those investors to this, you know, the people who have been working on these problems, right? Because right now we're establishing you want to build an alternative is prohibitive in cost and the decent purely decentralized solutions need to uh, 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 need more development. They just need more devs working on it. Whereas, you know, you could build an alternative to YouTube using Cloud for Stream, using Algolia for search, using Zites for hosting. Uh, and you could do it within like two weeks, but you need to overcome these costs. Three hundred twelve dollars a year for five for a, a user who uploads five hours a day, and also you need to overcome the costs of even read-only users will cost fifteen dollars a year who watch five hours a week, and write users will cost seventy-eight dollars USD a year. Right, so you need to overcome these costs. So if it's just like, hey, well, if Peterson, Rubin, Sam Harris want to actually finance these things, then there's ways to do it, right? But don't be financing your own damn private solution because these are such damn difficult problems. Uh, alrighty, so what's, what's the proposed solution here? So use what the tech industry has been working on and the problems they have solved and are solving. So collaborate with the tech industry. Now, we'll work with the community to have a positive feedback loop where the potential of the community and the opportunities of the celebrity are matched, right? Like, there's, Peterson has, like, a following of more than a million people. Like, the intellectual dark web probably have, like, what, 20 million people in their circles? Like, probably 5% of them are probably in the, I don't know, out of all of them. Like if you uh, get Brett Weinstein, like, you know, the whole thing and then add up the numbers, probably there's some okay. overlap. Yeah, yeah, maybe, like, I guess, the, like, like Joe Rogan million. has a large... Uh, yeah, audience too. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So I would say then, like maybe five percent, or like between three and five percent of the audience are in the tech industry. So let's say, okay, we'll be conservative and say there's ten million. Uh, oh God, I actually don't want. 
Okay, yeah. So hold up. Well, you say there's 10 million uh, people. I'm just doing some maths here. So let's divide that by or times that by 0.3%, right? Or let's just say 1%, right? So that means there's now 100,000 people in the intellectual dark web's audience that work in the tech industry that could help, that could actually be working with the intellectual dark web to implement these things collaboratively together. And also, so, you know, you need to be able to consolidate and, and utilize this potential of your audience with the opportunities that of like the investor money or the Patreon money or whatever it is, like the resources that the celebrities have with the potential of the audience. As well as you need to bring, yeah, bring funding, right? To get the decentralized solutions actually funded because you need developers to work on these things. But if you want to do a centralized solution, that would be fine for everyone unless you're a neo-Nazi, like unless you're a daily stormer, you could implement a centralized solution using Cloudflare, using um, like say Steam for the payment rewards, or just using, uh, yeah, so you could do centralized solutions as well that could be up and running in a month but you need to work around those costs right and the community like that at hundred thousand people in the tech industry they don't have those resources right but these celebrities do now the other thing here is these the intellectual dark web could help reform the tech industry's politics so they move away from censorship so that way you don't have to build alternatives to, to these people, or at least try to compete with these centralized solutions that are going to always have like 95% of the audience. But like YouTube is always going to have a domination uh, because of the superior, or due to the difficulty of the solutions and the superiority of Google engineers and the Google solutions, or even like for search or for payment processing and all these things, right? Like the centralized, like to build decentralized things like that, like Bitcoin tried to do it and the blockchain is trying to figure these things out. But these problems are so complex and they're still trying to figure these things out. Like it could be like 10 years until they can remotely compete. Um, well, actually you could say DTube kind of remotely competes already but it's just like you go through the reddit or you know their bug tracker and it's it, there's a lot of issues that they're facing and these are difficult problems um so like another YouTube alternative hasn't figured out either i mean look at elsa gate or yeah. anything like it. yeah mm -hmm. true like youtube's even trying to figure out because like that's the thing like people don't realize like video is so expensive right like you know 15 dollars right like probably the youtube user maybe costs even more right but like $15 per user, YouTube needs to recap, right? Like, like it's crazy. Like, yeah, okay, so let's, let's now. willing to operate YouTube at a loss for a long time now just because it props up the other ad revenue aspects of their company. Yeah, right? So it's just like, you know, you need to, and for the right users, it's just like, how many, how much traffic is, how many minutes are YouTube getting uploaded? Uh, let's see, YouTube minutes uploaded per minute. Well, so I think all of these points you're, you're raising are phenomenal. And I, I'm almost certain that he's got to be aware of some of these. Yeah, he's been involved with tech in some way. He has friends who are in tech and they're probably making similar arguments to him. And I'm willing to bet that he's primarily focused on the financial uh, transaction side of it right now. And he may be, I, I mean, I don't, like, is he trying to put a skin on top of Stripe? Or is he trying to, like, completely start a, a, a new credit card processing company from scratch and a new payment processing company? Uh, who knows? Like, he's been working on it for six months. Yeah, he, he posted on his Patreon uh, his new donate link. Um, I'm not sure what is behind that uh, like let me see okay so jordanpeterson.com slash donate and then what was it right it's powered you know, by donor box. donor box that's the uh new thing that he that he's working that i'm guessing he's using it uh, for his back end for whatever uh this thing he's been working on for six months donor box donor box yeah Nonprofit fundraising software. Huh. All right. 
anyway, sorry. <laughs> All right, yeah. Okay, so if we do cloud, so for instance, YouTube's, if we use Cloudflare Stream, which is like the best alternative uh, to YouTube, if you actually want to meet YouTube scale, then that's going to cost you $300 million per day. Hmm. Right? Like, these are hard problems. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, so. If anybody really want to make YouTube scale, though, come on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right, but I mean, this is the thing, which is like, uh, like you know, like what are you going to do? So, okay, so let's look up donor box. Let's find out what donor box uses. Hey, behind hold on, wait, 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 hold on, wait, wait. Right. Submit. Are you real? We they, like we haven't acknowledged or heard or anything. Are you, <laughs> like, like, do you exist? I, yeah, I, I said, do exist. Hey, uh, hello, I friend. Did, uh, <laughs> yeah, I haven't slept well, so I keep going in and out. Uh, oh well, <laughs> yeah. Maybe you should go to sleep then. Uh, yeah, well, yeah, do you have something that you wanted to bring up? Uh, though. Oh, <laughs> uh, ben, about... uh, ben has oh, been sorry. so articulate and uh, so uh, this thing. He just on a some kind of uh, you know. He's on a roll. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> uh, so donor box they use Stripe. Yeah, yeah, I noticed that. Like, they've got some sort of connection with PayPal and Stripe that they can they're yeah. integrated with. So again, like Peter said, you're not solving anything right now by <laughs> moving from Patreon to Donor Box, right? Because they're still using Stripe, which enforces the exact same censorship policies as mm -hmm. Patreon. Like, like you either care about. Um, so it's just like, okay, whatever alternative you're building with DonorBox or Stripe, people like Faith Goldie are still screwed. Probably people like Milo are still screwed. Maybe yeah. even people like Sargon are still screwed. Like you need to adopt something like, um, like Steam or some cryptocurrency solution to get money to these people. Yeah. Uh, so for the funding, the only option for funding for these people is is a cryptocurrency solution. Now, even cryptocurrency, uh, that was the final bit I want to add to this, which I haven't covered so far. It's like cryptocurrency is in itself a very difficult problem, right? Like we have the volatility and the crash that has happened this entire year, right? Like it's lost a uh, hundred, what is it, a thousand percent of its value? It went from, no, 10 percent. Okay, it reduced by 10 times. Um, so it went from twenty thousand dollars at the beginning of the year to I think two thousand USD. I think now it went to three. That is been balancing around three thousand. Uh, maybe right now it's like four thousand kind of thing, right? So it's just like, but if you're going to do a donation service, you need something stable. So then you have the stable coin uh, solutions, right? So stable coins seem good, but then I was been researching into this. The most popular one right now is USDC by Coinbase and Circle, but to accept USDC, there's a whole bunch of regulations. And if you're going to run any type of company that does crypto, eventually you either go the complete anarchist route where you try and just avoid tax, avoid policy, avoid government regulation and risk getting uh, seized at any moment, or you then go the banking regulated route, in which case you're still at the whims of governments or compliance. And the compliance issues cost money to implement. They're very difficult issues. You need lawyers, you need teams, you need developers, all this stuff to meet the compliance needs of abiding by these regulations. Mm -hmm. Well, um, I, I wanted to go back to a point you were just making. It For the, the people that are already outside the Overton window, like Milo and Faith Goldie and things like that, how viable are they going to be on a platform such as Peterson's? Especially, it, this is something I was just thinking about, it is if this new platform is tied to the Peterson brand, he's going to have to be extra selective about who he's affiliating himself with. Just like in the case with Faith Goldie, like because that was him associating w with her, that he was extra... Uh, careful about who, who he like, what whether or not he was going to be interacting with her. So, like, what are the chances that somebody like Milo would be actually acceptable on Peterson platform? Like, and, and even if 
it turns out like Peterson was okay with somebody like Milo or, or Milo yeah. is probably not even that too far extreme, but maybe somebody like uh, James Alsop or uh, Millennial Woes, some, somebody like that that are like uh, uh, part of the alt-right uh, that actually associate with themselves with the alt-right without being uh, hard, hard neo-Nazis. Like, are they actually going to be acceptable within... Let's assume that he does. Uh, Let's yeah. assume that Let's he assume builds assume it. He does. And then, what happens if PayPal puts pressure on him, just in the same way that PayPal put pressure on Subscribestar, so that he's faced with the decision of... Can't well, I think he's going to do exactly uh, what he did with Faith Goldie. That's what I thought. The discussion of free speech, which is throw them under the bus. Yeah. Like... Well, it, th that's the thing. Like, it, it's it would be exactly the same situation as subscribe I, start. I where... cannot imagine a scenario where the alt right does not rush his platform in an attempt to swamp him with requests to join, just to see them get denied. Right. <laughs> At the very least, I can't. I like. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah, just, I'll, just, I'll just be right back in a minute. Uh -huh. uh, Even if he did accept them onto his platform, just like bite the bullet and did that, then right. because he it, it's a platform that's going to be reliant upon all these other platforms that they'll they're going to have control over him and put pressure so that hey you've got to kick off Sargon because uh, he he doesn't we we can't associate ourselves with him. Like, well, I'm 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 gonna just a. Uh, assume that given their very strong adherence to the free speech agenda mm -hmm. that they're actually going to have to admit far more people than they'd like to that's what i thought but that's which the thing case, even when he does case, do that yeah mm -hmm. you dramatically polarize because the people who don't want to be associated with those joining peterson's platform would go to patreon right yeah. you'd, so you'd see the same kind of radicalization occurring on payment platforms uh, as you do in politics it would just segregate ideologically and i mean if we look at history that's exactly what happened in grata pay which is people didn't want right. to now be associated with grata pay yeah, which point. was this libertarian thing and they move all to libera pay and it killed grata pay finally i have a question for the ben so <laughs> Uh, so, Ben, yep. uh, see all the torrent uh, websites, right? Yep. Uh, so, all these powerful p people, right, who stand to lose uh, money because of them. Uh, uh, now, these days, we got all these, uh, uh, like, cheap, uh, uh, this thing, streaming websites. By cheap, I mean, like, they are affordable. Even in uh, India, Amazon Prime is there. So, people are uh, kind of moving away from torrents. Um uh, but a couple of years ago, you know, torrents were kind of really, really popular and uh, uh, their website kept shutting down and they moved to some country in, you know, Europe or where American regulations cannot be reached, right? Uh, uh, so why, uh, obviously that doesn't solve the problem in America where uh, these tech companies are doing this kind of censorship, but why can't people just, you know, uh, move out of America, uh, all their tech uh, websites, and uh, yeah. uh, even the what? so are all the payment uh, systems American based. I mean, uh, can't people what? find some safe havens in some other country? Yeah, so the torrents is actually a really good instance of this. So, for instance, Pirate Bay has been seized so many times, right? And I think the original founders all ended up going to jail. Uh, Peter, it's their actual story is fascinating to watch documentaries on them. Uh, there's Peter Seden, Sudan, uh, which is more like this libertarian activist. Oh, he was the one who created Flutter, right? So it's just like the tech industry uh, has been, you know, like the Pirate Bay issue happened, what, maybe 15 years ago when this the initial seizing happened. So Peter, Sunday, Sunday, let me uh, go back to screen sharing and I can look up his uh, name. So if you look into the origins of this, so Peter Sunday Flatter. So Pirate Bay was founded by three people. 
um, and uh, uh, of different expertises. Peter Sunday uh, was yeah co-founder of Pirate Bay. He ended up getting C's, going to jail. He paid, okay, my God. So he spent a year in prison in order to pay $3.6 million for just hosting a damn website, right? Uh, and uh, okay, so still this film is a good documentary on it as, and yeah, the Pirate Bay uh, away from keyboard. Uh, a good one. So after this, he's just like, okay, maybe I should move to other things. What about payments? Right? So Flatter, for instance, is pretty much basic attention token before blockchain. Right? So Flatter, you installed the Flatter extension in your browser, you use YouTube, you browse the web, Flatter would figure out where your attention is going, and then it would do micropayments to the people where your attention went. Right? Like this is a thing from 2010, right? Created by you know a guy who's had to deal with this, right? And you know these people are like really interesting. So like for instance, like okay, there's the instance of the Pirate Bay being seized because they were illegal stuff. But you also look then into what are the cases of Stripe actually censoring? So okay, PayPal censorship. This one's really interesting. Who are also the people PayPal are censoring? Why are the hell are they censoring journalists who criticize Israel? Well, it's actually uh, because of government regulation, apparently. Um, so blah, 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 uh, at least from what I can tell from this article. Um, so they're going to be forced to uh, compete, you know, oblige with the governments that they participate in. Um, but you also have, okay, well, why don't we just find a country where we can host these things? Maybe there's some libertarian country somewhere. Well, now you're actually moving to then self-hosted solutions, which then you have to deal with worse technology than what the centralized solutions provide. But you also have the issue now of someone could always steal your servers because they don't like what you're doing. They could always raid you. For instance, so many companies like Sweden copyright law. Uh, to the extent that the USA does. That's why Pirate Bay was hosted in Sweden. That did not stop the United States government from coercing Swedish police to extradite them and raid their servers. Um, you know, the governments are very powerful. But this is, again, like why Bitcoin and the libertarian crypto anarchy movement happened. Because then it's just like, huh. So, for instance, uh... Richard, no, wait, is it? Who, founder of Silk Road. Uh, Ross Ulbrich, for instance, another instance of compute censorship. Uh, Ross Ulbrich hosted uh, the Silk Road, a website where people sell things, right? Um, and he, uh, he was working in a cafe, federal agents faked an argument in front of him, stole his laptop, cloned the laptop, and put him to jail. Uh, and he's been in jail ever since, and he will probably never get out. And the investigation had several different issues with it. Um, so this then caused, okay, how do we prevent uh, compute censorship? And that's why the blockchain uh, took off. Uh, so for instance, there is Open Bazaar which is a replacement of the Silk Road. Open Bazaar does decentralized compute and decentralized storage. It uses uh, IPFS for everything, and it uses uh, Bitcoin uh, cryptocurrencies for the payments. Um, so this way, so you connect to like an, so for instance, we can see here in the browser like uh, thing in the email, it's like OB uh, colon slash slash and then some address, right? So this allows Open Bazaar to operate decentralized without being censored. But then, you know, they kind of have to re-implement everything that the centralized solutions offer from the ground up. These are very difficult problems. But it also means that, uh, you know, he's uh, the guy behind this, Chris Pacia, uh, probably won't be sent to jail like what happened to Ross. So you can. So the only option to completely avoid censorship is to. Um, so this is Chris Pacia, the lead guy from Open Bazaar. Um, so there's ways to work around, like the only way to work around censorship is to embrace decentralized tech. Now payments, it's still developing. There's issues with that. IPFS has issues. But I mean, like hosting an online store is a lot easier 
than hosting an alternative to YouTube or a subscription model. Um, there's those one-off payments and you know static content rather than huge content like video. Now we can also think of okay for the instance of torrents, you have popcorn time. Popcorn time was like kind of brought torrents onto the map of everyday usability. Netflix, but uses illegal torrents instead. Um, so this became incredibly popular. Um, I wonder if they have a picture of the interface anywhere. No. Uh, but again, you what happened here was uh, they had issues, again, of development censorship. GitHub and I think other ones ended up having to cut off their ability to actually collaborate. Um, and eventually they ended up building up a thing called the Butter Project as a way of doing this. Uh, so Butter Project is like this abstract thing and then it connects to networks. We, we um, should probably try and that, wrap this up somewhat yeah. so, so that it can be short enough for people to, to yeah. be terrible and things yeah. like that. Yeah, okay, so, but this is one of the things, like we see this from Cloudflare and we also see this like, the tech industry, like the dark web, like again, it's like, okay, the problem, like what Peterson did with Faith Gordy when he agreed and God said when they deplatformed her because of her affiliations is the same issue that's going to happen with probably the technology that Peterson's building. Because he's he's just, you know, swapped out Patreon for Donor Box, which still uses Stripe, which still does the censorship. Right? Mm -hmm. Like here's all the instances of Stripe censorship, like censoring and deplatforming things like Gab and these other free speech things. So whatever yeah. Milo and faith and whatnot join then they're going to be pre peterson's going to be presented if he's used a, a centralized funding service to mm -hmm. kick them off or we'll destroy your platform or we'll yep. kick you off our platform right so he needs decentralized funding uh, or he needs to then just limit it to certain people so who's he actually fighting for is going to be the question and how the hell is he going to do this? But this is the thing, the decentralized funding thing, no one in the entire world has solved this properly yet to the stability of existing solutions. Steam uh, and you know some other experiments with the blockchain world are the best we have, and they're not even there yet. So how does Peterson solve this in six months in private? I don't know. No. Like, <laughs> like, it's like, you know, like, you know, like, like the best minds in the world are working on this openly through open source in the tech industry, like for decades are trying to solve this and they haven't solved it yet. Uh, mm -hmm. And what they need is like, so what's the solutions? Okay, if you want to then work, right? Like, let me maximize the solution thing for the stream, right? Like if you want to then say, okay, people like Faith, Milo, uh, uh, whatever it is, Sorry, mm -hmm. you miss out until there's decentralized solutions. Like, because step one can be doing it, building an alternative for the most common cases, like Peterson, Ruben, like the the, the bitter tasting but still swallowable, right? So you yeah. can build up an you know, alternative using Cloud for Stream, but you still have issues with that. You could try and do IPFS, but like, so you could build a immediate solution up to facilitate discussions. Uh, oh, I didn't actually go into. Uh, Actually, let me uh, pull this up, right? Because I skipped over a bit of this problem space, right? Tech industry has been working on this funding video, current and emerging alternatives. So I skipped over this. So we got Vuely, we got DTube. Live streaming, incredibly difficult problem. A centralized solution that's open top, right? So the reason why everyone uses uh, Hangouts or Zoom, these are commercial businesses right, uh, to do live streaming. Because live streaming, even though WebRTC is this open standard to do it, uh, God, why is it so hard? Uh, okay, top box. So, so for instance, you can facilitate communication between us and this peer. We can build a mesh network, we send our video to each other. But if you're now streaming it to 1,000 people or 10,000 people, then what it means is my, my computer can't stream to a thousand people. I, my computer does not have the bandwidth or the compute power. So you need a immediate server, which we send all our streams to, that then 
has the bandwidth and capabilities to stream that out to the thousands of viewers because none of our home computers has that capability. So then you end up with commercial streaming solutions uh, like Topbox, but then they're also prohibitively expensive. Um, or you can go to the new blockchain world, which is Keyport Alivepia. They're emerging. They're not this like bleeding edge emerging for this, right? And now upcoming. Okay, well, for facilitating the discussion here, we've got the JVP community website, and there's several projects that I've been trying to work on for the last year to like, you know, make our website better, like bring in election notes, bring in transcripts, you know, have playlists, like facilitate these discussions. I talked about the discourse forum and how that can help facilitate. There's a decentralized tech called props project uh, that are trying to work on building a decentralized video. They're an emerging player here who want to, because like DTube and Viewly, they're going to be their own networks. Whereas things like Props and Parati, they could work with uh, existing video providers such as Vimeo or YouTube to then bring those video content into the decentralized technology ecosystem. Um, so this could be something to be leveraged, but again, these things are years away uh, from, and you know, they're just, they're just being, ah, okay, so this one here, notable investors. So Philip DeFranco, Casey Knight, that they've uh, invested in this Props project one. Um, and being advisors, right? So it's just like, but these things, like, they're not released yet. They're still trying to figure this out. But, you know, if you're building apps and you could utilize, like, if you're, like, these could be alternatives to Cloudflare Stream. So YouTube could utilize Cloudflare Stream. The engineer could utilize Cloudflare Stream. So this could be a decentralized solution to Cloudflare Stream. They seem quite promising. Now, in terms of the interface for communicating uh, and facilitating feedback, so the project I've been working on uh, very recently has been one called Fountain Network. So we've got the problem space, and mind map, interface mockups, uh, whatnot, and a lot of details about here. So I just want to, you know, give this one. Uh, okay, so that's the problem space. Uh, this is like a mind map of all the considerations and the business model uh, that's worth checking out. Um, and here's like a little interface, right? So, oh shit, is this actually going to work? Oh. oh, yeah, right. So, you know, you have the little video title at the top. You have, like, some keywords. You have, like, the participants on the left uh, who are participating. You have the transcription. And then people can react to timestamp comments. So, you know, you're watching the video, right? And then Peterson is doing his – oh, how do I close mm -hmm. this slide? Oh. Kind of like with what? SoundCloud where you can scroll through the timeline to, to find specific comments to certain points in the video things like that. Yeah. 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 Right. So, you know, you're watching the video and, but you know, there's a global, like a site wide search, right. Which utilizes goalie. You get good search for the videos and then you're watching your video. You can make your lecture notes. You can post timestamp responses of new videos or audio content. You then post comments, right. You can post like your own notes for the video. So you're watching a video, you get the transcription, you can see which participants are active at which points of the video, right? So if you click on Peterson, right, you will see all the videos Peterson has provided to, right? You can watch a video, you can see all the reactions and what specific, rea like, you know, things people are responding to, right? And all of this becomes searchable and in indexable. Uh, I've gone into like this, you know, is a very quick mock-up, right? But, you know, the reason I haven't gone and implemented this is because the considerations involved in this is just so damn complex, right? It doesn't mean that people haven't figured these, like, you know, figured out the interface stuff. Like, the interface stuff is easy. Like, the goal or the vision is easy. Mm -hmm. But the uh, the technical uh, constraints and the regulation constraints and all that are very hard. So, for instance, here's, like, a, uh, the exact uh, details of this fountain solution, which I think, like, fountain can, like, completely be the alternative to YouTube, right? Like a repository for conversations or like uh, here, uh, sorry, where is it? Um, on the thing, like I, I put it quite well, which is the one liner, which is revivifying the Gutenberg revolution by making knowledge decentralized, indexable and interactive. So, you know, on YouTube, we want to respond, like, you know, watch one of Peterson's lectures, then do our commentary on it, right? Like in this community, like, we've been trying to, you know, we've done discussions. We've got videos 
for our maps of meaning like you know we've watched peterson's maps of meaning lecture we've taken like uh uh lecture notes right where we have these notes right and uh you know john's got his notes here i've got my notes here and we've also done like a summary session where we go through the video but wouldn't it be better if you were actually watching peterson's lecture right and then in the comments like down here you see the transcription of what he's talking about and then on the and then on the right side like you see people's reactions and like you know i can see john's commentary exactly on this thing i can click john's profile and i can see all the things john has responded to if i use a search here it not just shows me the original content but it shows me all the responses if john's having a conversation with sam or 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 peterson Sorry, if Peterson is having a conversation with Sam Harris or on Ruben Porter Shapiro, then like we could actually do that. Now, you know, we the thing we had planned instead of this was reacting to John B. Peterson's uh, video on Ruben Report, but we previously did one on Oxford, by uh, his Oxford lecture. But then, uh, if we go to our YouTube account, that got copy striked, right? So like you can't do these like things on YouTube where it's just like you know. Someone, we watch a video, we add our commentary, we continue playing the video, we add our commentary. Because then it's going to get copyright claimed and three copyright claims and you're gone from YouTube. So mm -hmm. the thing is, is that, um, and also like if I, we do our own responses, like you can't just view this and then see all the responses for this. And if there is like a response to like, let's say minute 45, how the hell do I find all the responses to this exact minute? There's no mm -hmm. way of doing it. So that's what the Fountain Project is set up to solve. And I thought very hard on that and you can find the details and reach out to me. So the details for that is that Fountain Network, right? So it's just like, but the the key bit here is since the more, right? Like people have been been like the more for, you know, the more is just the most popular one because it was from Google. But there's people in everyday companies or even outside of everyday companies which have been working these problems that are like libertarian, the dissenters, the vocal dissenters, inside tech companies which have been censored, they fought for what is right. Like we see Brian Amaridge as like the most recent example from the tech world, right? So there's people trying to reform the tech industry's politics. And the intellectual dark work could help bring this reformation to the tech industry. The tech industry doesn't need to go down this route of progressive enforcement of the world. They could actually help work the tech industry to help reform them, right? Like you may not even need, like Cloudflare is a good example of this, where you know they were forced to censor um, uh, Daily Stormer, but they're trying to do everything they can to prevent that. And there's regulations that they've been working on to prevent uh, hosting providers from the need to censor, right? Where, the, where, or even cases without, that's like the EFF, Electronic Frontier Foundation's goal of net neutrality, which is, or one of the goals. So, you know, Cloudflare is working with EFF to prevent the ability for the Southern Poverty Law Center request censorship. So like, you know, there are people like libertarians in the tech world trying to reform the tech industry and the tech industry have been working on these things. Like, please, like, you know, if Peterson or Ruben are watching this, like, actually work with like the tech industry on this openly, like make use of our potential. Like, you know, you have resources being celebrities, like match those resources with the potential of your community. Like, so <laughs> yeah, yeah, so that's, right. that's my, uh, yeah. that's my summary. It, just to, uh, I guess, finish up, uh, I, I just had, I guess, kind of like three questions for uh, right now, like, what is our short game? What, what can we do like right now? What what is something that can be done just as us as individuals here? Right. Like. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. So that's a good question because I I just, like I just want to get that bit out of the way to be like they're walking potentially blindless off a cliff to fall into the same trap and that needs to be called out. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, yeah exactly. for, for the collaboration thing, then all the resources in this video are in the link below. So you can participate mm -hmm. that on that. Like this is a JBP forum. Uh, so, you know, this was the medium to communicate this. But uh, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, go through the spreadsheet. It's it's in the link below. Uh, sorry, not the spreadsheet, the, uh, the, the document I've been presenting. 
right? Like mm -hmm. work through these things, but it's just like, okay, if anyone wants to reach out to me, it's Benjamin Lupton, it's B.A. Lupton on Twitter or social media. Uh, but, you know, the thing I'm working on is Fountain Network as well as the Jordan B. Peterson community. So one of the th immediate things we can do for the Jordan B. Peterson community is update the website to list the lectures, list the transcriptions, uh, so it could be the YouTube embedded play initially, but with transcriptions that are interactable, searchable, like that whole time response thing, with this whole improve the feedback mechanism that Peterson talked about. These are super easy problems to solve. They just need some time and a little bit of funding, right? Like, like, but the whole decentralized payment thing, these are super difficult uh, yeah. problems to solve. Uh, and, and if you're self-hosting video rather than just embedding YouTube plays, another situation where it's an incredibly difficult problem to solve. So if you want to like help facilitate uh, feedback mechanisms or discovery of content related to Peterson and responses related to Peterson and we improve audience uh, and Peterson interaction, then the JBP community, so uh, JBP, uh, so Jordan B. Peterson dot community or discuss the Jordan B. Peterson dot community. Uh, uh, you can check the resources out there. Um, reach out to me, which is Benjamin Lupton. But uh, in regards to just what they can do, like, yeah, Peter and Ruben are watching this. Then it's just like, just chat with me, and then I can direct people to the appropriate resources. <laughs> but for the everyday Patreon supporter, there's nothing that they can do. Yeah, uh, I, I think that we I, we can see that as a failure both on Peterson's part, but just as much a failure on ourselves as a community's part for not centralizing ourselves into something that is actually it, it actually something that it could could be considered a community because like there is like the jordan peterson discord uh and that's probably the, the closest thing that there is to actual community interaction with each other but there needs to be a way like we need to self-organize and, and like create some sort of hierarchy uh, uh, of so that our whatever content that we're creating, things like that can be ranked. And, and just like what you were saying with the uh, PewDiePie and Loai, like the reason that works is because the, the community itself is actually doing most of the work. And then PewDiePie, all he does is just sort, sort by top posts of the week. And then he's able to work, work through it from there. And so there needs to be a lot more, uh, I, yeah. I guess in on ourselves. Yeah. And it's like like, well, those are things that, you know, they require time. It's just like, you know, like I don't earn any yeah. money from well, the JVP also, community stuff. So it's like Yeah, it also it requires yeah. effort on our parts too. That, that's the thing. Yeah. We can't yeah. just like wait for them to come to us. We need to act, be actively seeking each other out and, and uh forming yeah. a, a actual yeah, alliances and in, in, in communities, things like that. Yeah, but right now, like the biggest, uh, like say the discussion forum, like if Peterson selected that instead of Reddit, Reddit uh, then I think that would have facilitated communication and that feedback mechanism a lot more because that's what discourse is designed to do. And it has Patreon integrations, like it would have been a superior solution. But then it's just like, okay, for this feedback like stuff, like, you know, these are things I've been planning and working on, like, you know, I've been working on these things. And it's just like, you know, trying to like consolidate, but like, you know, if other people want to focus on, like, this is the other thing, which is these are complex things that require multiple people. Like I'm doing all the development work that I can, but then if other people want to evangelize and network, then, you know, that's also useful, right? Which is like, you know, like, mm -hmm. like, yeah. Because yeah. otherwise there's too many hats to wear and there's only so much time in the week. Exactly. But then like yeah. if Peterson's just suddenly like, I've been working on these things in private for six months. They'll be like, oh, great. I've been working on this for two years now on your community, like the Jordan B. Peterson community. And like, like, you know, it's just kind of like, hey, like, you know, a little bit of uh, collaboration here would have uh, gone a long way and you could have had something up like a year ago to facilitate yeah, well, that feedback. A, a, a like, collaboration <laughs> requires two parties to actually be uh, in, interacting yeah. with each other. Like, like, that's the thing, like we have, our community uh, forum, but yeah. how much have we actually been like spreading that outwards? Like, who, who, have we been yeah. going to uh, other people that are main as, main parts of the actual 
uh, Jordan Peterson community and have been. Yeah. But those are roles that aren't just like developer, right? Like those are roles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, 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 I'm yeah. fully taking on responsibility for right. that as well. <laughs> I, 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 we, we uh, like you, you've been doing so much on, on actually creating the the product and, and uh, me me and uh, Sumit and, and Tyler have all been like free writers just kind of like hardly interacting with it and not actually whoa, 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 whoa. Speak for yourself. <laughs> <laughs> okay yeah I, I, I fully take on responsibility for not yeah. uh, sharing this at more so and actually trying to no. Uh, well, it's the other thing, right? Like, which is this caption issue is a hugely problematic thing. So that's like a major nail on the coffin, which is that, okay, if I want to transcribe, uh, okay, let's say five times 52, 260, uh, yeah, 260, uh, oh, wait, sorry, yeah, 260 hours worth of content of Peterson's, then that's going to cost me uh, $312, right? So it's just like to make those transcriptions searchable legally, which is not what it seems that the search .com does, then it's going to cost, uh, you know, a lot of money uh, just to get that up and running. So it's like, or I can do it illegally and just wait until the YouTube lawyers come at me. <laughs> which, uh -huh. well, well, well. <laughs> so could you of... just copy the, like, in instead of, Using the YouTube transcripts, could you just copy the transcripts onto a separate file and, and then searching it through there? That way, you're not actually using YouTube. And since it's no, 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 no. So it's the actual ownership of the transcripts because the transcripts on YouTube are auto generated from YouTube initially, mm -hmm. but then they're contributed by individual contributors who own their contributions, who then grant a license to YouTube to use those contributions. Uh, people outside of YouTube don't get granted that license because the individual never granted it to them. You see what I mean? Like it's a very dodgy thing, right? Okay. Like maybe it could be covered under fair use, right? Yeah, but then, but public. it's just like, and it's because it's also like one of the things, which is like, okay, you would think Peterson would own his words that he says, right? But then you think about it in a book, and then like you narrate a book, and then the audio, like the author seems. Like if it follows that copyright law, then any narration of a book is under the author's copyright, right? However, audiobooks also have uh, their own copyright separate from the book. Like copyright law is a very difficult thing. And at least when I was going through the developer uh, policies and the API policies, YouTube has just specific things against reusing cap. Well, they don't mention captions, but they it's kind of like unless you own the content, you have no rights to it. Uh, mm -hmm. And with um, captions, it's not clear who owns it besides YouTube and the actual contributors. So mm -hmm. it would be best off, you know, just not doing any issues there and then just doing it. But I mean, it's also the issue with the translation, right? Which is okay. Peterson probably owns his English words, but who owns the uh, the uh, what we call it Hungarian words? Right? Sure. Like the yeah. other translation, right? Yeah, um, well, so that's will, the issue there. Yeah, this will have to be something that we'll continue offline uh, in, in discussing, like how we, as a smaller subsection of the Jordan Peterson community, can provide value for the larger subsection uh, and then yeah. how, how to facilitate cooperation there. Yeah. But because yeah, right yeah, now, I, like, I can only, like, for de from the development side, right? Like, you know, to do up this whole fountain project that I outlined, I like, think it's like a month's worth of effort. Right, like of development effort. Uh, but the thing is, is that, you know, unpaid of a month is a lot to ask, right? So, and you also have all the server costs uh, uh, for the, like the initial cost of the transcription uh, rather than just the wage costs, or you just use the usual caption thing and then do it completely for free. But you still have that initial development stuff. So it's just like, uh, you know, maybe one thing I do is I set up like a Patreon <laughs> for uh, the JVP community and that people can uh, help cover their costs. But uh, otherwise then, um, uh, yeah, so, you know, otherwise collaboration, like, so there's evangelism, but all those things we discuss on the discuss the join B Peterson community and there's a projects uh, forum and that's where all that discussion uh, is taking place. But what we can do as part of the JBB Peterson community. But for the Patreon issue, that's like a whole nother ball game. 
like we can, like Peterson's fine. Uh, you know, solutions can be built around Peterson and Rubin Report and Sam Harris. That's fine, right? Like, like you know, Fountain can be deployed to them. Uh, uh, alternatives to Patreon can be deployed for them. Great superior technical solutions that are done by tech engineers can be, you know, accomplished. But if you're wanting to do things for um, for the censor, then uh, then you're fresh out of luck until you do decentralized tech. But that's that's no one's kind of really solving that. All right, let, let's wrap this up. Samit, you had a question, though. Go ahead. Uh, I'm a little uh, confused about uh, this whole captions uh, discussion. Uh, so uh, earlier, uh, uh, what Ben was saying that uh, you can help the community by just uh, transcribing his lectures. Uh, uh, and the later on, you were talking about uh, taking the captions from uh, uh, YouTube. Uh, but uh, why can't we just listen to his lectures and uh, just have, have our own transcriptions. Oh yeah, yeah, so you can totally do that. So so my point was about reusing the existing transcriptions from YouTube or then paying a service like IBM Watson to do the transcriptions automatically. Uh, so, but those both things have the solution where I don't need to code something to then manage editing of transcriptions. Uh, because then you have to build up a whole interface to measure, like to write transcriptions and then make sure they're not abused. Uh, we could kind of do that. Um, so that is like a, another solution. So either way, like whatever you'll need is like, okay, the transcriptions will need to be edited and corrected. Uh, so there needs to be some type of facilitation for that uh, immediately. So that could be the other thing where people work on transcriptions, but uh, manually, like completely from scratch. Uh, but then it undoes like all the work of existing people or undoes like the work of automation. So like transcribing like, you know, a two and a half hour video from Peterson Pro takes like 10 hours. Like uh, there's a, a website that recommends that it takes like three times what the listening speed was. Um, so yeah, it'll be like eight hours or seven and a half hours. And then you got all of Peterson's content, it's a lot. Um, so there is like the IBM Watson thing works terrifically and it'll be like $2 a video uh, kind of stuff, right? But, mm -hmm. um, you know, well, that could be done. I so my current plan, all the stuff for J like just continuously make incremental improvements to JBP community, still not reusing captions, like just using YouTube. Uh, well, actually, I'll probably use like the YouTube captions. But I the other thing for the fountain stuff is just to, I uh, code it up with maybe like three videos, show what's possible using the best tech uh, ecosystem stuff. And then it's just like, okay, now we have to figure out how to do the funding thing to actually make it fleshed out. So I'm thinking I'll implement it for like three videos and then we figure out how to fund getting other videos into it. If that makes sense. Uh, I don't know. I, I... As of right now, there is the rudimentary tool uh, uh, that Peterson has on his website, the search dot Yeah. So that, that's, I, I, I guess, for myself, lower on my uh, th things I'm worried about, or not worried about, but things I, I'm looking to uh, further, like, because we have a yeah, that that rudimentary search engine that that that's definitely helpful. Anyway, uh, but yeah, yeah well, uh, for that right, like it's just doing a search of the transcripts and a yeah rudimentary yeah. search, right? But it's not facilitating this feedback mechanism, right? Yeah, like, that's like, that's what I, we, yeah. I think is more important is ha having a system of actually like finding where these conversations are occurring, like that are related to this like yeah. video that I'm already but This watching. is the thing, which is like Fountain is like an idea that I've been talking about for like a year uh, in more closed social circles and went public about like about six months ago, right? But like if that was implemented, then like, you know, like we could have watched, like this could have been like a Fountain response to that original video rather than embedding it at the beginning of this thing, right? And like, you know, then Peterson could actually find out like, you know, these creators could get, uh, you know, find out what is the responses to individual things and it gets bubbled up through the community, right? Mm -hmm. And it's just like, but, you know, that can be a huge project. Like if you want to do like, like, you know, adopt Steam then, like that could be one of the ways to help fund uh, like the proper fountain solution is to then adopt Steam for the payment. Uh, like, you know, so you vote on content that pushes it up, people get paid. And so this, uh, 
This has been a primarily a technical problem survey of uh, what a lot of the industry has been looking at and what perhaps faces Peterson in the future. But there's another element of it, I think, that is equally important, and that is the culture that surrounds the people uh, associated with the types of topics that uh, we you know, find Peterson and the other people. I am not going to call them the, you know what? The um, ineffectual dork web? <laughs> yeah, no, I, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not labeling. The, the group of people, uh, formerly known as... <laughs> All right, so yeah, that these these topics need to be discussed uh, in the same way that the universities should have been teaching people to do the entire time, right? And not only that, but the the process should have been improved upon. So, in some sense, what we're doing right now is sitting in a little tiny tiny uh, digital amphitheater, right? Like in some ancient Greek agora having a few philosophical chats back and forth amongst ourselves, right? Maybe doing a bit of Socratic method, uh, asking hard questions, figuring something out like, but this, this is a fundamental uh, reimagining of the same thing that was going on before long ago, right? These little self-improvement uh, guiding ceremonies where we try to scrape the truth together and figure out what we're all supposed to do like these little conversations that are taking place and that's what's been sparked i think amongst the community primarily by peterson uh that that truth can be discovered through conversation so where fountain network and and projects like it kick into this is at that level it's where they, the the technical problems are being solved so that the culture can move from something like impersonal knowledge to personal knowledge, where people are able to communicate their felt experience and their own uh, struggle for figuring out what the hell is actually going on out there, right? Or in there. So there, there is yet, from my perspective, there, there has yet to congeal or coalesce or however you want to envision it, uh, or solidify a, a, a cultural structure that is allowing uh, the types of conversations to take place that I think people are searching for, right? They're longing to be able to sit down with Peterson in front of a fireplace, in some cabin in the woods, and talk about Heidegger or Jung or whatever, or something like that, and then figure out how they're supposed to improve and then have some structure that allows them to improve. That seems to be the, the, the gist of the, the scene, let's say. That's what they're looking for. So they need tools to do that and a kind of social structure that knits people together and allows them to make a individualistic community, right? Where people are reliant upon the conversation taking place rather than, you know, what, what you're superficial aspects are mm -hmm. exactly right. so mm -hmm. go ahead i was doing up the uh the cost of trying to figure this out right and um the so okay fountain could be implemented or for the jpp community like for pearson or for ruben or sam or whatever it is right if like legally and uh cheaply like so the transcriptions is the only hard thing so you could just do a risk where you just use the YouTube transcriptions, right? You make them searchable. Uh, but then you could do it where the interface is coded up so it just uploads people's responses to YouTube. Or, you know, people do their responses on YouTube and then they add it to Fountain as a timestamp response. So, for instance, YouTube hosting is free, right? This, this is why it's so damn popular. It's the only thing that offers a free solution at scale that does, you know, transcriptions, some... Um, like captions, caption translations, the streaming issues, right? Like it costs so much to do YouTube from an infrastructure perspective. So like something like Fountain can be coded up immediately to, uh, uh, you know, using the API to upload responses to YouTube. So that could actually be advantageous actually for Ruben, Peterson, uh, uh, Harris, right? Because they're not censored individuals. So like John, you know, he, he thinks Peterson's wrong on X point, right? In 
10 minutes through X video, right? So then John can do a response on uh, YouTube and then link his response into the Fountain Network uh, at that timestamp or in the Fountain Network interface, then he could immediately say, post a video response, start recording video response and make us uploaded to YouTube, but then it's transcribed and indexed and whatever on, um, on Fountain, but with the YouTube embedded player. And that way John as well and Peterson and all that, they still maintain the, uh, the YouTube audience. Uh, it doesn't solve the issue for the decentralized, uh, for the censored people, but then Fountain can be coded in a way where it could incorporate YouTube along with the whatever YouTube alternative, like DTube or whatever it is, uh, as an alternative, and it can work in these uh, things. So it's just like, you know, this is something that has been thought a lot about, uh, and it can solve this uh, issue. So at least that's what I'm working on. All um, right. And well, so, yep. we're at around two and a half hours. Why don't we wrap this up and then continue it uh, afterwards after uh, signing off? Yep. Alrighty. So. Uh, yeah, that's fine. Uh, okay, I'll do the outro unless anyone wants to say anything else. All right. Arrivederci. <laughs> <laughs> All righty, so uh, yeah, this has been a Jordan B. Peterson community discussion. So you can get the details at jordanbpeterson.community instead of .com.community. The discussion forum is discuss the Jordan B. Peterson .community. Uh, there's a project section there, which will cover a lot of what we've talked about in this video. All the details, like this presentation that I worked through in this video, and the notes below. Uh, and uh, the project I talked about is Fountain uh, Network. You can get the details at fountain.network uh, and and kind of collaborate on that. Or you can message me on Twitter at BA Lupton, because uh, my name is Benjamin Arthur Lupton. Um, and other than that, probably share this and try and get this to the attention of the intellectual dark web and whatever communities, because these considerations actually need to be brought to the to the forefront. Um, and I, I was fortunately joined today by John Buck, uh, who's uh, we're going to be discussing one of his videos next week, which he did on metaphysical truth. Metaphorical uh, truth. <laughs> metaphorical truth. Yes. And, uh, uh, I stand corrected. And um, uh, we were joined by Smith all the way from India as well as Tyler. So, all the way from Florida. Alrighty. Uh, yeah. So, uh, oh, you can also follow us on Twitter at JBP Community on Twitter. So, I'll put all the links in the description. Thanks so much for joining. Share this with the intellectual dark web because uh, they need this information. All right. See ya. Bye. Smash that like. <laughs> Smash that like. Yes.